Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening, and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition stream with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, Dungeon Master Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing the half-elf shadow sorcerer, Sebastian Crow. And we're joined today by our good friends. <laughs> I'm Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. A really big shout out is that tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use at the game tonight, including these really awesome dwarven gold dice that I'm going to be rolling. Uh, I'm really excited. I have never seen beautiful metal dice like these before, so I'm really excited to use them. Uh, and what's more, we're going to give away a free set of Skull Splitter dice each month now on the show to one lucky viewer. If you follow us on Twitch or are subscribed to us on YouTube, all you have to do is follow the links in the description below to confirm your entry. And we're even going to give you a plus one bonus for those of you that follow us on Twitter as well. Um, if you would rather pick up a sweet set of these awesome dice for yourself now, you can head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com and use the discount code DDUDES, DDUDES, which will give you 15% off your first order. So a big thank you to Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, and I believe Joe also has a thank you to go out as well. And one more big thank you to uh, Paul for switching my shift. <laughs> you go get him, Tiger. <laughs> you go get him. Fantastic. When last we left our heroes, they had ventured deep into the ruined city, into Queen's Park Gardens, a verdant and mutated garden in the heart of Drakenheim's ruins. There, beneath the grotto of Queen Lenore, they found none other than the former queen of Drakenheim, Lenore herself, who had been hiding in her grotto for who knows how long since the city was destroyed. Managing to subdue the queen who had been changed by the delirium, emitting herself the radiant forces of delirium that almost threatened to do our heroes in, they managed to subdue her and bring her back to their tower where they planned their next move. Having secured several eldritch lilies, their original objective in visiting Queen's Park Gardens, our heroes are now have now ventured to one of their earliest contacts, the hedge wizard, Oscar Yorin, whose research into the delirium was the reason why our heroes sought out the Eldritch Lilies in the first place. For Oscar Yorin claims that with the potent pollen or materials of the Eldritch Lilies, he is able to fashion a potion which will protect someone against the effects of the haze, the radiant mist which has infested the ruins of Drakenheim and saps the strength of those that seek to explore the ruins and indeed rapidly can kill those who approach the most dangerous areas of the city such as the castle, the mage tower, and the crater itself. With both a horde of eldritch lilies in hand and Queen Lenore blindfolded, our heroes have ventured back to Reed Manor to cut a deal with Oscar Yorin. Having revealed to Oscar the identity of Lenore, our heroes are now in the midst of a difficult negotiation. For, of course, Oscar Yorin does not know that our heroes are working for the Amethyst Academy, who would sooner see Oscar Yorin dead and his research in their hands 
than anything else. So let's find out what's going to happen next. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a recap. Yeah, I prepared that, that one. That was great. Um, okay, so you have all ventured now into the dilapidated Reed Manor. And Oscar Yorin, the hedge wizard, has invited you down to his laboratory, this dank dungeon underneath the manor that is equipped with all manner of racks, surgical tables, vials and shelves of all manner of alchemical ingredients, and the desiccated corpses of Yorin's latest experiments. Seated on one of the cleaner surgical tables is Lenore, her black dress ruffling up, her blindfold still in place, and she's swaying gently, almost losing sense of her reality. As Oscar Yorin eyes her up, he's a bedraggled, moderately pudgy man with a pale face, and his eyes just glow with a hint of delirium that he has been constantly imbibing this black goatee around his pallid, kind of pudgy flesh of his face as he eyes her up and down, looking at intermittent moments at the surgical tools arrayed on the table beside him. He turns to you and says, So, you've brought me Eldritch Lilies and the Queen of Drakenheim. What do you want from me? I feel like we've been in this basement long enough. It feels like months. <laughs> <laughs> I, want... I just woke up. <laughs> so listen here, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> as I try to remember everything that I said 30 seconds ago. Um, but also 30 days ago. Yeah. yeah. We've given you these lilies. <clears throat> You and I are going to need to start working together. We're both men of magic, and we're both after the same thing. We want to know what the effects of the haze are on the city. In exchange for this many Eldritch Lilies, because you asked us to bring you a few, we've brought you a bag full. He nods. Hopefully they won't die while they're here, but... I'll see what I can do. In exchange for that, I need some samples of your potion that you've been working on to test. I can be your field research. I am my field research. I can tell you the potion works. I would like to see that for myself. Fine. You've brought me these Eldritch Lilies. They will provide me with the raw materials I need to make more of these potions. I have a few already created from the last time I had some Eldritch Lilies in place. I'll give you three now. And I'll make more. As long as we continue to have a productive working relationship. I think that you having these potions and risking your lives in the ruins, that will work in my favor. But if you have these, I want what you're going to get. With these potions in hand, you're going to be able to visit parts of the city that no one's been at in 15 years. The crater, the mage tower, the castle. I want to know everything you find. On top of that, though, we still have the issue of the queen as well. Yes. Oscar Yorin looks her up and down. My queen. She is suffering from whatever has happened to her. I don't know what I can do. I'll be honest with you. What she's been exposed to, I'm not even sure she understands it. She'll be an experiment at best. That's all I can promise you. I'll do my best with her. And perhaps... 
perhaps some of the treatments that I've applied to myself, I could apply to her and see if that reverses the effects of whatever's happened to her. Over the years, I've built up my own innate resistance, hence I'm able to live here, but what's happened to her is far more drastic. I couldn't say if it'll take, it could take years, if at all, to do anything for her. As long as you do your best to keep her alive. And can we loosely use the word experiment? Can you more like treat? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like, <laughs> like the idea of experimenting like, on like <laughs> my queen. Just like that that choice of words. We want you to be really super careful. Also, please don't tell anyone that she's here. Of course, and neither should you. Did anyone see you or you followed here? No. If the Hooded Lanterns find out that I have her, it'll be the end. You know that. It'll be the end of the Queen, and I want to make sure that doesn't happen. <clears throat> Why do you think that? We've got our notions. we got our ears around the city. There's something going down, and we don't know who to trust. So we're trusting you to keep your mouth shut and make sure that Why she stays alive. Why didn't you bring her to them? Because we're not sure who we can trust within the Hooded Lanterns. Smart. There's one last thing, Oscar. Since I'm going to be field testing your research, and since we have a working relationship now, I'm going to need access to some of your notes. I'm not going to ask you for all of your research, but I need access to notes regarding the effects of delirium, what you found, and I might need to copy down a few of those. Why? Why? Because I'm a man of research myself, and it's going to help me better understand what's happening out there. Actually, he's can... a man of magic. You said it earlier. A magic, Science and magic. magic. <laughs> You're a magic man. They're the same. They're the same. Science and magic. Pluto, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I think what uh, we're looking for is ways that if there are effects, if there's something goes wrong, we need to be able to potentially treat it. And I think uh, Sebastian's going to be the best person to be able to interpret what that would be when we get to that point. Also, we might need to make more of these potions in a rush, and it would be nice to have the ability to do that, even like a, a rough one, so when we're out in the field, to make sure that we can get that stuff back to you. No. That we find. No. No, the research is mine. We don't want the secret ingredient, just like a... like a. You already else. know what the secret ingredient is. Oh, yeah, we do. Tabaxi blood? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about that, but... He kind of winces for a moment, and he... he um, we got plenty of that in yeah. supply. <laughs> <laughs> Although, actually, could you use the tabaxi blood in to help you with the queen? Are you offering? <laughs> I, She's already offered. I'd offer to save my queen. I would do anything. I just, I just give up my friend's blood sometimes. <laughs> it's fair, though. It's totally fair. Yes, I need more of your blood. <laughs> okay. Okay, in exchange for some of your notes. Yes. I'll let you choose, but I need the basic research on delirium that you've done. We don't have to go too deep into your breakthroughs or anything like that, just... The field notes. To advance our working relationship. I don't think so. No. Well, then why would we give you more blood? You're treasure hunters, aren't you? You're just here for the ruins. I'm here to find out what happened to Drakenheim. I'm here to protect the city and its prized queen. If you have these notes, what are you going to do with them? Read them. And then what? Memorize them. And then what? Use them. Where? In, In what laboratory? Where are you working from? Do you have a base of operations? If so, I'd like to see it. Where's your laboratory? Where are your materials? Where's your equipment? If you're going to make use of these notes, where are you working on them from? Can you work I am here? currently setting up a laboratory <laughs> in the clock tower. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah. And we're looking for some backers. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want to get on the ground level of our new <laughs> watchtower laboratory. And that's a great place to do testing because it's, it's right in the middle of the haze. Yeah. 
Are you being honest? Is that your intent? I'm <laughs> telling him what I believe he needs to hear. Okay. Give uh, me a with, deception check. With as much honesty. We could do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my bedroom. <laughs> 24. The clock tower. The, you're living in the clock tower? It's our base of operations at the moment, yes. Always Slash lived in the laboratory. Clock tower. Slash mm. laboratory. Thank you. Thank you, Pluto. Be high above the haze. You could rest there. Secure, defended, fortified. You can observe the crater. That's a good place to set up shop. Thank you. We also have assistants that won't die. <laughs> and you can throw things <laughs> off the top, and it's really fun. <laughs> How droll. <laughs> The little Even tinker like guys. The thing I said. <laughs> All right. Do you have equipment? Some. What do you have? It's a uh, little, su- little, su- <laughs> little Sebastian's uh, potion making kit. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a junior adventurer. <laughs> It's got a little Bunsen burner, and it's got a little vial. You're going to need far more than that if you're going to make any use of any of my my things. Look at what I have all around me. Um, whatever, whatever. We, okay, I can't remember, but there was a bunch of stuff in that room with the uh, Modrons. Yeah. Hmm. Or yeah. Yeah, we have um, an obelisk. Yeah, we have an obelisk. Do you have an obelisk? No. Yeah. yeah. We worry. have one. Yeah. We're. It's, what do you use it for? Uh, oh, so it's far, it's burning things. burned a person <laughs> to death. That's a heat source. Exactly. <sighs> yeah, I have a few uh, vials and a Bunsen burner. <laughs> we have <laughs> some harpy feathers. You're not. <laughs> you keep coming back to me. You've brought me this queen. I have to admit, saying, I don't I'm... know what to make of you. Who are you working for? I'm working for myself. I'm working for these two. We're a team. All three of us came to Drakenheim hoping to figure out what happened here and to restore some form of peace to this city. Although that seems incredibly unlikely, we're Mm -hmm. still here to analyze the situation and figure out what our best course of action is. And so far, unwillingly, you've been one of our best allies. Hmm. Well, I suppose if you're... And you want me to babysit the queen while I work on her. You are the leading professional in research on the haze. Therefore, you are the most likely person to save her. Babysitting is not the word I would use. We're giving you Hmm. the honor of possibly being the person who saves Drakenheim. Can you imagine what the queen will bestow upon oh. you if you restore her to her rightful place on the throne? The power, mm. the riches, the prestige. This is true. Yes. If anyone could shield me from my enemies, it would be her. Yeah, And you'd have our support as well. And if we continue doing our job, hopefully we'll be as renowned as you and we can all live happily ever after in a new dragon hunt. Fine. So much candied salmon. Those, have you heard about those paladins that are outside the city? Heard of them, yeah. Have you heard of those crazy cultists that are following this falling fire business? I have. We've talked to a couple. You're not working with any of them? No. You're not spying on me for the Hooded Lanterns? No. You're working for the Queen of Thieves, aren't you? We, we have killed a lot of her <laughs> people. Killed way too many people. That's a that's a road I don't know if we can reverse on anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're I, pretty committed to the whole she hates us thing. I don't think the Queen of Thieves um, is going to be our friend. <laughs> and we hold up soon. all like the the band like the bandanas and like the golden <laughs> purple. Mm-hmm. We have a lot. Killed a lot of them. Mm. Fine, especially the halflings. I'll be right back. He 
He turns down the hallway, opens up a gate that's on the other side of the laboratory, and heads down a darkened hallway that turns and veers for a moment. And he leaves you there for a few minutes. I truly think that went well. Good call with the riches. It was good. I mean, if anybody can give him riches, it would be the queen. It's it's true. Yeah. Pluto, good job on the um, selling the tower. I have uh, one afterthought. What? Because uh, we told the hooded lanterns that this the queen is like a some cult follower. Yeah. Does she has Does she still have any identifying marks or traits? The queen. Yeah. She has her necklace. Yeah. I don't think we can take that from her. No, yeah. but either I was thinking, Veo, maybe you want to take it, or maybe we need to hide it, because if someone came here and saw her with the necklace, they're immediately going to know who she is. Potentially, we have more leverage if if she stays kind of like off the radar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That makes sense. Um. Is there anything else that tells her apart from just another her face. haze? I mean, her face is pretty... She's missing eyes and... No, she's not missing eyes anymore. Oh, right. They grew no, back. They grew back. That's weird. <laughs> that's we gotta tell Oscar that's ominous. That. <laughs> we got to tell Oscar about that, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of give him the rules of how to deal with the queen so he doesn't die. Um, but, yeah, no, I think the necklace is really the only thing. We have the signet ring that identifies, like, the royalty of uh, Drakenheim. That would really be the only two things, which we should keep that signet ring pretty hidden. You mean on my hand? Yeah. <laughs> Hidden on your hand. Because it's a magic item that I want to You're showing everyone <laughs> your ring all the time. Maybe we should like... You're speaking when Nora yeah. speaks up and says, Are you leaving me with this doctor? Yeah. He's going to help you. My queen, he is our one hope in getting you back to the state you used to be. We trust him with this. So you should trust him. What's happened to the city? The city was destroyed by a meteor. I remember. I remember. I remember when the guards said to run into the grotto. There was fire falling from the sky. She grabs your hand, Veo. She says, and she holds it, and she says, I remember your your father came and said he would come back. That he had to go and find, that he had to go and find the king and my children. My queen, do you know where they were when the meteor fell from the sky? She thinks... The castle. They were in the castle. Nobody's been able to get into the castle since that day. You have to go. I will go. But I need you to promise to stay here and try to get better. Because if we find your children and we find the king... We don't want them to see you like this. She she nods and she says Thank you, girl. Thank you. I need to get better. Something's very wrong. I don't quite feel like myself. But I don't feel like I know who I was. Well, we want to get you back to who you were, and you don't feel like yourself because you've become something else. So we're going to try to get you back to our queen. And I know that we can do it. Oscar will try his best, and we'll do anything to help you get back to the way you were. And I, you know, with her hand still in my hand, I take a really deep bow, and I kind of like get down on the Mm. ground on one knee and say I would do anything to serve you my queen and I will find your children and your family 
she she points down to her 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 chest and she says in in the box the box I don't, she kind of reaches out she points in the wrong direction because she can't see for the blindfold mm-hmm. she says take the portraits of my children then you'll know them they'll know that I sent them how big are these portraits there's they're smaller ones they're like locket sized okay I like overhand and I go into her chest and I rummage through and I try to find them yeah and I put them in my bag at least we'll know what they'll look like yeah that's helpful <laughs> that's actually yeah. yeah that'll be important thank you my queen as as you're going through the box going through what's there um Oscar comes back into the room and there's this rickety screeching sound as he's pushing this bo- this push cart <laughs> the bottom box of them it's covered in is filled with these clinking vials and glasses and as he comes forward you can see that part that on top of the push cart there is a leather pouch that has been closed over and a pair of books and as he pushes them out he li- he comes back into the room and he holds up the book and he says you can take this thank you and then he opens up the leather pouch and inside are three very strange contraptions. As he opens the pouch up, this glowing orange liquid, the glow of it fills the room. And you can see that there are three long, thin vials, maybe about four inches long, and each of them has been set into a metal contraption. The one end of it is a large plunger with a pair of metal hoops on one side the other is a sharpened needle about six inches long and he says this this here I call aqua expurgio It is administered directly to the heart. All right. A suppository wouldn't have done or? <laughs> no, I tried that. It was, <laughs> it, no, we don't, we don't want to That's go fair, with that. Fair, fair. That would have been my first go, but so, yeah. Listen, so a little bit of heartburn while you heart. Yeah. <laughs> Just right into the, Are the we old. like Pulp Fiction style? Yes. Yeah, cool. That's directly to the heart. <laughs> can be administered in two ways preemptively or in an emergency Hmm. in someone that is in the late stages of delirium sickness or poisoning you can administer one of these to them and it might save them if they're not too far gone otherwise you you can inject it directly into the heart in advance. So far, the solution is relatively stable. It lasts a few hours. Afterwards, if you are exposed to delirium, you'll piss pure fire and vomit black bile for about a day or two. But it's better than the corruption staying in your system. The fluid gathers up the infected flesh and blood in your body, and then your body does what it does best, and it comes out, and it hurts like nothing else. Yeah, I've done a juice cleanse before. This is like, <laughs> I don't know what you're selling me on here. <laughs> I've tried tried all those little naturopathic... like. <laughs> Caspian juice cleanse. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, into the heart. That's gone. <laughs> uh, Oscar, I have a question. Have you tried this on any of the corpses that haven't decomposed? No. It's too valuable. Okay. 
use it when you need it and not before. I have a question. If if we've been out in the haze before, are we kind of building up like haze in our blood? Almost certainly. Uh, this probably means the first dose is going to <laughs> be particularly painful on its way out. Because we've been in there. We've been we've been digging around. Oh, remember that trip we took by the Mage's <laughs> Tower where I almost died just by breathing? I wonder. Hmm. Oh no. Oh, yeah. I wonder what it would do to me since I've been in the haze for like fifteen one years. One thing that you can, you should be aware of. <laughs> if you feel a fever, that's normal. Well, your your body temperature will rise, and you will sweat, and your sweat will probably be a glowing orange. That's normal. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Well, perfectly we normal. It's it's fine. Don't think about it. What isn't normal? What should we be working out for that in just in case Sebastian has to administer some magical first aid on himself <laughs> or on a willing test subject? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Sorry, a- ask that again. Uh, if there's something that's going wrong, what does it look like? Mm, spasms, convulsions, seizures, perhaps a stroke, random surges of wild magic, constipation, diarrhea. Saturday night. Oh, yeah, if the effects... Uh, con- contact me if uh, you have any effects <laughs> lasting six or more hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'd l- very much like to know if the effects a- last that long. Um, you'll probably find it very difficult to sleep after taking taking this. I love your notes. <laughs> Hard poop. So. And so, so, just so that you all know, once you take this, it will last until you take a rest. So taking a short rest or a long rest ends its effects. And the first long rest you take after imbibing the the solution has no effect. Is it because of the pooping? Yeah, it's because yeah. of what it does to your system. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't get any benefits from. No, in that? fact, you, in, in fact, you'll gain D three exhaustion levels after the the effects wear off. Potentially more, depending on how much toxins you you ex- it absorbs for you. Sounds so good. <laughs> Sounds like I'm ready. Uh, yeah, like let's. And this is what River <laughs> wanted us to test, right? She wants a field test of this potion, right? The yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, we could also just take Oscar's word for it that it works, or inject it into somebody willing to venture into the haze, preferably somebody well armored and confident. It's too bad that I can't be a test subject. Oh, I'm yeah. not mad about it. I don't think Pluto could either. He doesn't have what it takes. Yeah, I could do it. I don't it. know. I don't think. What's that? Well, I didn't want to, but. Nah, do you think? Do you think you could? I think he's gonna chicken out. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. We'll, um, we'll need to find a willing test subject who one. has the guts. Yeah, strong inside and out. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I promise you it works, Oscar Yoren says, but don't use it frivolously. No, we only three vials. Fair. Where um, do you think you'll you, you'll go to first? Well, why not go to the source? Yeah. The crater. Let's yeah. I've never been there before. Me neither. Let's we'll see if we can find you something shiny. As as this has all been happening, I've been thumbing through the book he gave me. Does it look like legit notes? On, you're uh, thumbing through it, um, opening it up and th- thumbing through it. There's like some serious alchemical, magical, arcano formulas that are happening inside here, along with diagrams and ingredient lists. You're gonna need to peruse it for a few hours to determine whether or not it's legitimate or not. But it looks like uh, at first glance, it looks. 
full of magic. If I passed you some, if I passed you a textbook and told you that it was a book about astrophysics, would you really be able to determine whether I was telling you the truth or not based on a thumbing through it? Is the title of the book astrophysics? <laughs> yeah. No title on the book. There's, there's no title on this one. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I'm saying to you is that, you know, you, you look through it and it's it's what you'd expect from magical research, but whether or not anything in here is actually true or not or works you're gonna have to go through it mm -hmm. oscar i'm gonna take some time to read this book and for our working relationship i hope that this has some valuable information in it it's a summary of several of my early experiments and some of my first successes and You'll find in there a catalog of things that definitely don't work. Can I keep it? For now. Hmm. Thank you. See if there's any notes that you can give them too. So to and from relationship. Um, Oscar, also, um, you know, with regards to the queen, I know we talked about that a little bit, how she's going to be staying with you, but um, don't let her take off the blindfold. It's for your own safety as well as hers. What is she capable of? Burning your eyeballs out. He nods. Like through armor. Spicy stuff. She under emits there. A, a light. She's got a hot, and hot glare. It feels like you've been in the sun a very long time on a very hot day. Feels like you're in the sun. And the sun was like mm. 20 feet away from you. <laughs> yeah. I don't do well with suntans. Yeah. Just be aware, it might be part of your, um, I don't want to use the word experiment, treatment mm -hmm. to examine that, but just, you know. Put on some really good sunglasses. Yeah. Be cautious. Fine. Yeah. <sighs> and she trusts you. I asked her to trust you. And can you hide the, the necklace? Can we, like... Can you like we should take that. We're worried that if someone comes along, they're going to be able to identify her by her jewelry because I could identify her by her jewelry. Hmm. It's a very well-known piece. It is. I think it should stay with her. It's one of the pieces of proof that we have that she is who she says she is. I think and even if, you if we lose don't take it, in it in the ruins, I have nothing. Can you hide it somewhere where if somebody comes and raids this place, they won't find it? I'll do my best. Hopefully, it'll be hidden here with her. She'll be staying down here. I can't let her possibly get upstairs. The Hooded Lanterns patrol this area. They protect me. and She'll be protected in many ways by her own guardians by extension. Good. It's the way it should be. But they cannot know she's here. No. We will hold you personally responsible if they find out. They will too, and they will kill me if they find out I have her here. Mm -hmm. They'll think that I did this to her. Listen, we'll find someone to bring you back and then kill you again if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's our muscle. <laughs> she's the muscle. We just... Fine. Good. Then we have an accord. Let's go test out this uh, <laughs> orange goop. The heart? <laughs> yeah, right into your heart. Oh, wait. I got to give you my blood. <laughs> Before, we, Before right. we go. Yep. Alrighty. So he will take another sample of your blood. Do you mind if we rest a bit before heading out? <laughs> I know it exhausts me. Uh, Fine. <laughs> such a, such a You're welcome to stay here. <laughs> Can we get some food too? <laughs> Do you have any uh, ale? Go upstairs and talk to Gamma. Yes, I'll meet you guys up there. Gamma. So it sounds like... Um, with that, Oscar Yorn does take a sample of Vale's blood. Once again, he pulls out one of the syringes and bleeds you into a pail. Mm. You can make a constitution saving throw. 12. You do gain one level of exhaustion. Wow. Um, 
that said the it's later in the afternoon and you come upstairs Gemma wordlessly brings you some bread and beer um and uh the only words she says is got my eye on you three I don't trust you thanks for the bread <laughs> Marco's zombie kind of lurches around collecting the plates after you finish eating. Thanks, Marco. Sorry about the uh, incident. Oh, sorry about the zombie, thing. whole zombie thing. Hope, hope life is a zombie. It's okay. What's your next move? Um, I guess after we rest up and get you unexhausted. Well, you'll need that to spend, okay. you'll need to stay overnight for that. Do we want to stay overnight? That's up to you. You're the tired one. I'm pretty tired. You gave a few drops of blood and called it a day. <laughs> Rough day for you. Yeah, you yeah. had a big day. <laughs> I think uh, if we didn't do experiments at night, that would actually probably be best as well. So, if so we you want to wait till morning? D- if we do the morning, yeah. And then head down to the gate that is run by the Falling Fire cult? Yeah. We're outside the city right now. Yeah, so we would go around the outside... Yeah, if we bring up our map there. Um, so you are all up at... Uh, Number seven? Yeah, which is the Reed Manor. Um, it's going to be a long journey, but Daddy. we're also we're going to be venturing to Emberwood afterwards mm-hmm. with our all, all of our research, everything that we've gathered. Uh, we have a lot to take care of in Emberwood Village. We have a lot of things that we can do there. So I think the crater is a good choice because after we're done, we can just head straight down to Emberwood Village. Or do you think we should go in through Shepherd's Way, cut across the city, and go to the crater and then go out Champion's Way? The only thing that scares me is cutting through the city just puts us in a lot more danger. That's true. But going around is going to take a lot longer. It's going to take time, yeah. And River's only there for a certain amount of time. She's waiting. Let's. She gonna wait? Yeah. I vote go through the city. Well, I'm glad our uh, stealthy companion here has decided <laughs> that marching through the city is a good idea. I'm also your uh, guinea pig, so I feel like we also need a. Um, feel like I can. Mm-hmm. Not just a test subject, but a, a another subject, don't we? Don't we need two? She's the long-term exposure. I'm not really sciencey. Yeah, so. we're um we're using the queen. We, I we jotted down notes of her uh, situation. Okay. We won't have to say that it was with the queen, but when we talk to River, we can say we found somebody alive after long-term exposure. Here are the effects. Oh. Okay. And then we're going to use Pluto as our test subject for serum. the serum to see if it works. Perfect. And, then and so is your on. your plan then is to go towards test the serum near the crater itself oh yeah i guess we could we could also just like test the reverse thing where like i go stand in the crater for a while and then (laughs) and then and then you stab me and see if it takes away the i feel like that would potentially do more damage to you or just do it as a uh as like a um preventative yeah, yeah, I think that we're going to use it as a preventative, Preemptive. and you're going to just march right into the center of the crater, and we'll see if it works. Maybe at least to the edge. Like, you don't even have to go all the way Can in. Can I tiptoe in? Can I well, slow I mean, play? I we're not going to send you all the way into the crater. We're yeah. just going to... Yeah, just... We're going <laughs> to... Like, on a rope. <laughs> close, and if you start to feel any terrible effects, like, come out, you know? Like, and, I mean, uh, if you start convulsing and all of those other side effects, you'll just let go of the rope and fall to your death, and we won't know. So. No, we'll tie it around what? his waist, and we can pull him out. You're That's right. much smarter. Yeah, why? <laughs> why are you gonna try to kill me? We'll get a. We'll I'm get not trying to kill you. We'll get an animal Just to assuming help. Assuming that it might happen. Can you at least read the book before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you at least stop skimming over your astrophysics? I flipped through it. There's some stuff in here about mixing chemicals. I'm even wondering. I'm can a sorcerer. We... I lied to him. I don't actually know anything about mixing this stuff. <laughs> I just. I just cast spells naturally. I played up your potion. Yes, thank you. We got what we needed. I have no idea what I'm doing with this research. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, can you read it on the way? But I guess there's no point. I have been reading it. It makes no, it's gibberish. Zero sense. Okay. Um, One day I woke up and could cast hypnotic pattern. I don't know how this stuff works. (laughs) Can you at least read like the side notes? 
like the little stuff scribbled in. Like, can you just try? This looks like a picture. There's a few words that you recognize in this text, like and and the (laughs) and don't do this. And I tried this. It didn't work. Um, Use that. I see the word death here a lot. (laughs) Death. (laughs) All of this equals death. This page equals death. There's a few descriptions of him testing various concoctions on test subjects and noting down how long they survived after he injected them with his latest concoction. I understood. I understand these pages. He's killed a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. But hey, at least they all return as zombies to serve him. Like as you go as you go through this, did we leave the he's queen in the right Probably place? murdered about fifty people, just in this book. Like it's literally a confession of murder as you flip through it. Of <laughs> it, it, it doesn't bother. Of me describing much. about fifty people that he's killed, I or thro- tested on. I throw it in my bag. Well, looks like this queen situation is wrapped up nicely. <laughs> like I said, Science if we come a, back and she's dead, a feisty mistress. and he's dead, we're bringing him back and we're murdering him again. Why wouldn't we bring the queen back and? Escape. Bring her back plus bring him back and then kill him again. Anyway. Vengeance comes before. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're so you're walking through the dangerous city, flipping through this book. Like, is this is this understand. is this what's happening now? Like you, and no, I, we're heading. I'm to looking war. at the, the size of the now. needle and I'm just like dreading it. Like oh, why does it have to be so big? We're heading towards. It's not like one of those thin needles, right? Like the the it's one of those big thick. Like a hornet. Yeah, like like the one that after it pulls, like after it like comes out of your body, there's going to be a clear puncture mark where it went in. (laughs) For cast. Wait, wait. Can you do you have anything like ice? Related spell wise, that you could at least freeze them or cauterize. Can you cauterize the wound at least? He could. After, <laughs> yeah. I can either cauterize it or I can I can chill touch your chest beforehand, and then I don't gain possibly <laughs> doing damage to you. <laughs> and then we'll use the thing. But you won't feel it. Yeah, <laughs> then you won't feel it. Doesn't that prevent me from gaining hit points or something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um. So. <laughs> How long is it going to take to go around the city versus through the city? Oh, let's, I, let's power through. To be honest, either will be like you've traveled the outer route around the city so many times. It's, it's just that if you want to go through the outer route to take Champion's Gate into the South Ward, you haven't made any arrangements for getting through Champion's Gate. That's what I'm worried about. Whereas you do have a deal with the Hooded Lantern for getting through Shepherd's Gate. Yeah. True. Yeah. I still think that we have an inn at Champion's Gate. Not that that's mm-hmm. the right choice, but we did save a group of them. The other the other areas of Deep Haze that you know of, you've experienced the Deep Haze around the Mage Tower, and you know that the Old Town has Deep Haze there as well. So those, it, it's not like the Great Crater is your only choice. That's true. Uh, there's also around the mage's tower, which is number 10, right? Yes, that's what I just said. That would be oh. probably the easiest Good. way. We could. It's the closest. We could go through Shepherd's Way, run up to the tower, test Pluto, run back out Shepherd's Gate, and then head down to Emberwood Village. I say that's a good plan. That's a quick plan. Pluto? I mean, I feel like I don't have a lot of say in this. So <laughs> you, uh, you, you volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that we're stabbing, so where would you like to go? Um, Where would you like to get stabbed? I would like to have the most comfortable place that I can expel everything, <laughs> wherever that is. There's a lot of houses near the Mage's <laughs> Tower. I'm sure you can. Can we find a nice squat in one I think of you those? You only expel it after, though. <laughs> I just want a nice squat place because if, if we go to the tower, the way he described it, I feel like it's going to be like a, a bit of a journey. Yeah, for me to it, it won't be right away it'll probably be a few hours later I you know that's what I'm not looking I'm that's even wondering a, uh, it's how fast can me. you get out of your armor <laughs> <laughs> just just wondering will you guys help me will you help me I don't want to be in the splatter zone <laughs> please help me please help me take off my well how about this we'll remember take off the armor remove before the visor. remove the visor for the for the vomiting portion he didn't say vomit. There was he, no vomit. No, he did. He said it, it's going to come out of vomiting everywhere. black bile. 
Oh, I thought it was just the other way. <laughs> okay. And no, it's it's both ways. It's oh. always. Uh, every orifice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Use every available exit when uh, when evacuating the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shepherd's way. Uh, all right. How does how does Polito feel about uh, about being the volunteer? This is uh, I hope cements the trust my colleagues have. I trust you for volunteering. <laughs> I respect you. You I've... volunteer me as tribute. Volunteer <laughs> tribute. Yeah. I Pluto. I, I'm kind of goaded on by Sebastian. I respect time. you. Yeah. So I do. Thank you. Okay, um, and I know I'm the only quality subject, and I'm the only one strong enough to take on the the heart stabby thing. That's so. true. I wouldn't That's trust anybody so else to do it because they'd probably die just from the stab, let alone getting yeah. I can get stabbed. I've been stabbed by tons magic. of times. This is just another stab, just another stab. that my friends are doing. You've defeated you. at least one troll. <laughs> at least one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And if I can beat a troll, I can beat a needle. I'm not scared of needles. Scared of needles. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's buried in there in my lore. Okay. So you've set off once again into the city, heading through Shepherd's Gate, the typical passing through the typical ordeal that you have agreed on with the hooded lanterns as you head back into the city one more time. Through their fortified position where they occupy the barracks there. Again, crossing that little moat that they've set up outside the front portion of the gate. Going through the first half, they close it, open up the other half, go through the others. As you as you pass through, um, one of the, the hooded lanterns says, You guys are making pretty frequent trips in and out of the city lately. You keeping busy? Yes. Yeah. You've been in and out of here every day. You're braver, maybe better than I thought. What's your Thank trick you. for living in the city? Being a tabaxi. Her? <laughs> yeah, it's mostly her. It's Veo. I show them around. Veo's good people. Good luck out there. Thank you. I'm good people, you hear that? <gasps> yeah, according to these idiots. I know. <laughs> oh, you, oh, they hear me. <laughs> oh, the gate's not <laughs> up. No, they didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> You head back along Shepherd's Way in the inner part of the city oh. towards Market Street, the intersection of the two main thoroughfares leading into Drakenheim. And as you look forward, you can see the great tower of the Amethyst Academy, the Mage Guild Tower, looming high over the northwestern part of the city. As I said, the tower is over 300 feet tall. It's a massive structure that its highest spire is even higher than the great cathedral of St. Vitruvio and Castle Draken. But it is that persistent oddity in the city for, as always, the center part of the tower has been smashed through and the top piece hovers precipitously over the rest in defiance of gravity deep gash in the middle where you can see a little rope ladder hangs down between. But it points you quite clearly where the meteor impact is in the campus surrounding the Mage Tower. Is that your destination? Close enough to it that I, I know that last time we went into that area we hit haze pretty hard mm -hmm. uh, even towards the outskirts of Queen's Park Garden. Mm -hmm. So as long as we get close enough to send Pluto into that haze. That's our goal. Yep. Alrighty. Get your notebook ready. Noted. <laughs> it's a rather dark day in Drakenheim. There's a light rain falling as you head into the city. The mist of the delirium hangs rather heavily. You can only probably see about 100 feet ahead of you down through the city streets as you get further in as you come closer and closer to the mage tower, the haze becomes thicker and thicker, and your visibility drops to maybe only about 50 feet ahead of you. And as you navigate the twisting streets of the college district, the back alleys 
the narrow cobblestone streets all sort of meld together in a maze-like fashion. But Veo, you're able to keep things pretty... able to keep on top of everything. And it's here that already Pluto and Sebastian, you begin to feel the impact of the heavier haze. I immediately pull out my handkerchief and tie it around my face again, uh, like last time. Only this time I won't take deep breaths. Mm. Yeah. Pluto, what are you going to do? Does this help? The helmet, the goggles do very little. Although the goggles help for the eye irritation that happens when you're when you're exposed to the haze, but even breathing in the haze very much like it burns down your throat, right? It tingles through your body as you breathe it in. Um it's like and you start scotch. to feel just that that light pang of nausea as you walk through the haze. Like a good scotch. Like a good scotch. Yeah. Uh, it tastes like a good scotch in here. <laughs> <laughs> breathing the, scotch. <laughs> I'm breathing scotch. The buildings of the, of the oh. area are mostly brownstones or fair Tudor building, Tudor style buildings. M- many of them built with several stories of stone and upper levels of slate shingling. Uh, spire-like as this was the area that that several of the mages and their families and the people that catered to those of the mages guild lived as a finer district but the streets remain quite narrow what would you like to do for so you guys want to try this thing or like what's going to go go down how are you going to do it uh pluto i think i need you to strip down <laughs> he needs to take his armor off for sure at least your breastplate i'm going to need to have access to your heart <laughs> <laughs> Every time a man has said that to me with goggles, nothing has gone <laughs> right. It's such a Trust great. me. I need access to your heart. <laughs> so are we going to... Can you pardon? freeze? Yeah, like. Not without making it so he can't heal. No. I, just, you, you just use your fingertip to gently... Massage it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you just at least give me some like uh, bedside manner? Like just hold my hand. I can hold your hand. Yeah, thanks. I never really learned bedside manner. Oh gosh. Okay. It's probably um, so I so out. let me just just uh, make sure I understand what your intent here is. <laughs> so your intent is to strip naked. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Almost naked. Like you're going to I just want to take off the the, okay. the the nice armor. And then Sebastian's going to stab you with this horrific needle and inject you with this questionable fluid. And you're going to then what? I'm going to uh go into things. I'm going to um yeah, do some alone uh, jumping jacks. Or where are these two going to be when you go into the haze? How oh, far yeah. away? How far away is the deep haze? <laughs> these are great when questions. You're, when, you're, when you're saying it all like this, it really starts to make us question. <laughs> I mean, my plan was Like, I was just... a lot more confident walking up to I'm just worried about him passing out. Is like, Can we t- tie a rope and if it pulls? Because, like, your visibility is limited to about 50 feet. And if you're going to let him, like, how much time are you going to spend in the haze? Um, Sebastian, if you're going to be exposed to the deep haze, what are you going to do? Well, you should stab yourself like, with, in the heart. No. We um, only have three of these, and we need to test this. What um, we'll do is uh, I'm going to I'm gonna walk around for an hour in the deep haze. Alone. And Veo's going to keep an eye out. Can you be on, like, the edge of it? Because, like, I can keep an eye, but only so far. It still affects me. It's just not as bad. Mm. The only thing that that might not tell you is it will, if you're just on the edge of the deep haze, it will perhaps not be as impactful data, maybe. What if we tie a rope? If if you're satisfied with just knowing it works. My solution every time, we tie a rope to Pluto. (laughs) Uh, You hold the end of that rope. Mm -hmm. We tie a rope to you. I hold the end of that rope. You go a little bit into the haze. Pluto goes more into the haze. We tug on the rope if something bad happens. This just feels like a, a like an episode of something with portals where it's like, I'll just... <laughs> I'll yeah, we're sending you into the dangerous Why? portal and we'll tie a rope and everything will this be fine. This is where I'm getting more confident. I'm even wondering how high is the haze? Uh, here, the, the haze hangs over the highest buildings. Yeah, the the haze usually rests anywhere from a hundred to two hundred feet. I can over yell really city. loud. 
This is like the movie The Mist. <laughs> Only worse. I'm worried that if something happens with it, I just want to be able to get you out. Oh, I appreciate. I have a handkerchief and goggles. I'll be fine. <laughs> I have the drift globe. Um. But what if you pass out? Oh, yeah. And have seizures? That's why we need a rope. We'll feel the seizures in the rope. <laughs> <laughs> it's bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, okay, so how ca else can we test it? We could also just walk around in the heavy haze for a bit, and then one of us take the thing and see how better we feel. But what if it doesn't work? And then we just... it well, then at least all three of us are in it. <laughs> We're in it together? Yeah. Let me see. Um... My plan was always to stay outside the, the <laughs> Yeah, I know. Base. And I'm trying to drag you in. Ooh, question. Could could I... How long did you said an hour? Like, I think an hour is a good... A good, like... I have a rope trick. And I'm wondering if I go at least to, like, the edge of the he heavy um, haze. And I can watch you from there. And you, you be further, if that would work. You have rope trick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to no, I'm trying to think of this in characters. It like in character. Um what does rope trick do? It allows me to um touch a length of rope that is six feet long. On the end of the rope it rises to the air until the whole rope hangs perpendicular to the ground. Um an invisible entrance opens and I can essentially go into like a little dimension. Okay. I have a stupid plan. Okay. <laughs> Can you not start with that? Uh, we're going to stab Pluto in the heart. Okay. We're going to run into the deep haze. Okay. You're going to rope trick. You and me are going to climb up. <laughs> and we're just going to chill there and keep <laughs> eyes on our test subject below and us. Just okay. stand there? <laughs> no, we can, we can tie the rope to you. Like and then that. if something happens, we can pull you up. I yeah, like we can that. pull you into the well, no, I like, pocket dimension. I like dimension. the idea of you guys just standing, uh, like s sitting in a pocket we dimension keep, above me. Yeah, we keep eyes on yeah. you. We're in a pocket dimension. There's no haze. I'm in. Cool. We have to make a mad dash. I'll like hold my breath and we'll okay. run as far into the deep. I have a rope trick miniature. I'm gonna have to find it now. Um. So we have and a we can, flawless plan. I can do this plan. twice too. I can yeah. do this twice. Okay. So if totally we really need bulletproof. To, <laughs> Completely we have two hours worth unbreakable. Of rope trick. Nothing can go wrong. No. I okay. feel like we've prepared for everything. Yep. Can I cast spells from inside the rope trick dimension? Like out of it? You can't. Attacks and spells can't cross through the entrance in or out of the extra dimension. But I can space, stick but my those hand inside out. can see as though it's a. Yeah. Like I can if stick you, my hand out and outside, fire spells. Yeah, you could do that. Sold. So we're going to go You're find so some sick. really cloudy, hazy haze. Jump in and rope trick out. And you're going to kind of create an observation deck <laughs> yeah. so that you can watch and the I'm gonna, test. Subject. I'm going to lay there and just <laughs> take like, notes. I'm going to I'm going to do a lot of like um, uh, calisthenics. Like I'll do like I'll do jumping Breathing jacks exercise. and like there'll be all like the sensors hooked up to me and I'll be like running on the spot. <laughs> Like a good proper medical <laughs> test of the of the haze. Yep. Resistance. Sounds great. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's do it. Um, I can also what I can do is I can um, uh, feline ag agility it forward and uh, and get it set up. I'm gonna um, see if I can find my rope trick. So that way you can. Uh, I'll have it all ready to go, but it'll have to be quick. Like once I have it, I'll yell, be like, "Go!" And because we only have an hour. Yeah. Um, again, if I need to do it twice, I can, but like, I don't want to waste it. One amazing thing is that Monty has a mini for pretty much everything that you can conceivably think of. So finding the rope trick mini is now essential. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it might not happen. Um, I guess the, the, I want to do it. I want to, I want to stab, stab myself. <laughs> do you want to stab you yourself sure? in the rope trick or do you want to do it? And then we do the rope trick. You, can you? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, I'll feel better it, about it. Yeah. Are you, you don't you don't trust me to do it? it? I totally found my oh! rope trick mini. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I can't um. even see it. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. There you go. Lovely. Okay. There you go, everybody. So we're all going to run in 
to the exactly haze. We find a deep spot. You guys rope trick up. Rope I'm gonna trick. stab myself in the heart with the <laughs> with the um, the the mystery potion, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll see what happens. We're gonna just hang out for an hour. Okay. So, is there any sort of spot that you're gonna look for? You're just gonna run and end up like wherever um, as deep as you end up after like a couple minutes of running it. Run yeah. towards the tower. Okay. But well, we we just want to get far enough that like basically as long as I can hold my breath for it. The haze kind of falls, right? Does it settle more or less? It's a it's a it's a mist and a thick fog. So if you've ever been in that pea soup style fog, that's what it's like right now, although there are flickers of purplish matter and particles that hang in the air. I love pea soup. I'm also thinking, um, you said there was a second piece of the meteor that broke off here, correct? Yes. <gasps> Let's run towards that Let's as go much as there. possible. Let's go. We, we want to go to there. Yeah. Okay. As like Until we start to feel the effects really badly, and then I can just rope trick it up and uh, get out of there. And then. And we when we say run, anything. like a light jog. Like okay. Not exhausting, like not but sprint. But you're not walking. It's not a Sunday stroll. Should okay. we be worried about enemies in this? Oh, haze? yeah. <laughs> I don't know about in the haze, but I haven't been as far in the we'll haze. We'll find that. out. About it, so <laughs> hopefully you don't come across anything. We're not going to be stealthy, that's for sure. Okay. Clunk, 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 clunk. So you are sta standing along the intersections of Dweemer Street and College Street. The, the last area before the deep haze really begins to sink in. G and Pluto, so are you going to armor back up after you imbibe this stuff? Is this the idea? Yeah. Okay. So how long would it take for me to like get uh, to to move my breastplate plate around? What am I wearing? Splint. Uh, you're wearing splint. So just to, I just want a, a, a nice clean shot at the old the old ticker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a nice yeah. clean hey, shot wait, could at I, the... Oh, could I tie it to a arrow and then shoot it at you? I, I feel like the accuracy is better if he just okay. stabs himself in the heart. Yeah. yeah. As much as you want to shoot Pluto in the heart. Yeah. Yeah, please don't use <laughs> a sharpshooter. <laughs> don't you? So it is It is heavy armor. Taking, taking the armor off entirely takes five minutes and putting it back on again takes 10. So I'll say that uh, to take off the armor, cause you, you do, it is like a coat underneath and everything like that. The upper part portion of it is a big bit. I'm going to say it's going to take 10 minutes to take the armor off, administer it and put it back on. Is that fair? Yep. Okay. Okay. So are you going to lay down when he gives, he gives you this? Or are you going to stand up? Like... I'm going to do it to myself. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. So brave. So, um, <laughs> so brave. Uh, yeah, and actually, if you if you I'm have so help scared. taking the, uh, uh, if you have help putting the armor on or off, if these two help you, it it will go faster as well. Yeah, can we do that? I'll help dress and undress you. Yeah, okay. Can we, if you guys both help, and then just ru and then run up into the thing as soon yeah. as my armor's back on. Then I'll do you want to take it off before we start running? Or did we already run into the deep We already ran into the deep haze. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're thinking about this as we're running it. <laughs> as we're running into the deep haze. <laughs> All right, Pluto. Ready for your juice cleanse? <clears throat> you take your armor off. For science. <laughs> take that OJ. All righty. And you I press it into your flesh. Gah. You press the plunger down. <laughs> rope trick. As you press it into your body, it's boiling warm as it goes into your body. You can feel it Ooh, hit nice. inside Ooh, you. That's hot. And Ooh, ah. <laughs> almost immediately, you can feel your body temperature rising. It's like a fire has been set in your heart. It's like when I'm dancing. It's, uh, more like extreme heartburn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. like when he's dancing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I only dance with Imodium. Press it in. Currently have resistance to radiant damage. Ooh! Now that you've Im imbibed this, uh, and I'm gonna secretly roll to find out how long this is gonna last before the uh, before the really bad effects kick in. Hopefully, it's more than an hour. Oh, I think it will be. So, 
take the. What do you do with the leftover syringe? Uh, I'm gonna pocket it. Pocket it. And these two. And, and I emptied it right. Like there's yeah. no drippings left. It's like yep. all in me. It's all in. Oh yeah. Don't put your hand in the pocket. Can already the see way. see as <laughs> as the veil and Sebastian as you start putting the putting the armor back on him. You can already see him perspiring. <laughs> and this. What? You can see what these very clear beads of glowing sweat dripping down his, his brow. And when you put your helmet back on and close it, there's actually a little orange glow coming out from your visor <laughs> of the sweat. Like, Is there's it a weird? What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> well, it's working like Oscar said it would. Everything is checking out so far. Uh, are we going up your Let's rope Let's get trip? out of here, yeah. yeah. And we start to climb up. I already cast are, it, so... Wait, or didn't you want to run further in before you did this? Oh, are oh. We, I thought I was. Uh, maybe I had the order wrong. I thought oh. you were gonna put, imbibe, run in. Yeah, and let's no, run yeah, in yeah. now. Yeah. Let's okay. run in Sorry. now. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Sorry, I thought we were already okay. in. It. Yeah, never running in. <laughs> run, 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 run. Okay, your chef over. Alrighty, sprint. so you all out sprint in. You find yourselves in as you as you race forward. You find yourself in an area of low ruined uh, buildings and homes, some old shops, and you can smell in the air. It's like this acrid smell of what was probably several alchemical shops and storage areas as you're heading deeper into the, into the area. Um, and already, Sebastian, you can feel the impact of the the deep haze despite your protections. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to get both you and Veo to make constitution saving throws with advantage. Because, again, Veo, even though you're resistant, you're not immune to the effects of the deep haze. Nada. Pluto. Con? Nothing. You feel fine. I feel great. My cardio is at an all-time high. I got 18. It's a con save? Yep. I got a 10. A 10? You're all right for now. Oh, man. Okay. Oh. All righty. You stop in the street, and you can start to see through the fog. You can see that purple glow of delirium not far in the distance. You're pretty close to the crater, but you are definitely in the deep haze. Do you want to go deeper, or do you want to stay here and go for it? I say we go for it. Might as well do the full experiment. You mean like move closer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's do a quick. I feel great. Quick sprint. What kind of a uh, researcher would I be if I wasn't uh, checking out this crater here? Mm -hmm. Okay. You rush forward and you come to a small square, an intersection with several more shops, buildings in the midst of several alleys. And as you come closer, you can smell this rank alchemical odor has been increasing in smell as you get closer. Shot through with that familiar ozone-like smell of delirium. And as you come forward, you come into a small, um, into a, a square where there is a completely shattered and blown out building. Not dissimilar in size to the Rat's Nest Tavern. However, you can see that the building has been blown out and in its place is a seeping mass of glowing liquid. Because the whatever impact happened here it seems to have hit an alchemist shop and it has created the the crater itself has been filled in with this bubbling soup of all of alchemical ingredients that is glowing purple with with delirium it almost looks like that whatever this meteor was made of what the alchemical ingredients melted it into delirium soup and it is glowing and bubbling and as you come close to it Veo and Sebastian, you can feel the radiation of the of of the haze and the delirium burning off of both of you, and I need you both to make Constitution saving throws, but neither of you gain advantage on the saving throw. Twenty two. Sebastian. Twenty three. Okay. You are both fine for now. The effect is persistent, and I will need to make a saving throw every minute you remain in this area. Let's get out of here. Right before, mm -hmm. since since I've just made this save, um, can I take the empty 
vial from the potion that I drank a uh, couple games ago. Do I have tongs? I, with my thieves' tools, do I have anything that I could, like, scoop it without touching it? Get yeah. Pluto, get Pluto to do it. You also have a mage hand. Oh, yeah. I also have a mage hand. Mm -hmm. I quickly mage hand the um, vial and scoop up some of it and cork. Okay. Liquid. The mage hand takes the vial, puts it down into the liquid, and the vial melts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time to go into your yeah, rope was, trick hole. Okay, that cool, cool, cool. <laughs> science performed. You know what? We, um, we may not be able to get it now. But I'm wondering if your dad can build us some things out of the, the meteor. The meteoric iron, like a container. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. All right. Let's uh, let's get up this rope trick before we... Rope trick up. up. Uh, Pluto, you stay down there and do some jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah. I begin uh, what is going to be a 17-part study um, in haze resistance. We should probably... Um, yeah. I'm keeping a journal. Poke your finger in that uh, <laughs> in that goop. Oh, the thing that melted the vial. <laughs> hey, just you're because resistant. it melted the vial doesn't mean it will melt flesh. The vial wasn't resistant. Science. You are. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I have my reservations. Okay, maybe we'll I... do this. As, we have three vials that we're going to be able to try this out on. Which toe do you need the least? <laughs> the okay. pinky, the little one. Yeah, just dip your little toe in there. Okay, what if I did this then? What if I did this? Don't, I, you don't Just have tell to. Tell him there's a troll that took it off. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the boots, the spike boots that we took from the gnomes. Mm -hmm. I want to take Sebastian's dad, dad's boot, das boot, and uh, I want to, I want to try to, <laughs> I want to go to the edge of the pool and try to like dip it in the. Okay, so you you're gonna cut, walk to the edge of this pooling crater, and dip the boot into the liquid. Okay. Remember that scene from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> oh, my boot! <laughs> well, it's a good thing you have the backup boots. I mean, you're wearing the backup boots, yeah. or it's your main boots. Um, okay, and so you're going to dip the boot in into the liquid as Veo and Sebastian are... In a in little the portal. Creating the rope trick? Watching, okay. what? Observing and so, taking notes. Okay. So, uh, does Rope Trip have, have a cast time, or is it just one round? One action. It's one action? Okay, great. So, the two of you create the rope trick, and you zoop right up. So, Paluto, you're going to go right to the edge of, of, of this whole thing. I'm going to approach it slowly. Okay. Does it burn? Um, as you approach it, um, you can see that there's like a weird reflection of your face in the surface of the liquid. And then it looks really strange. Make a perception check. Twelve. You look at this reflection, this twisted reflection in the surface of this alchemical soup, and all of a sudden the eyeball uh, of your reflection starts to almost raise up out of the soup. And it's getting larger and larger, and you realize it's an eye. It's a real eye floating in it, and it increases in size, and then it pops, <laughs> and spraying a small amount of acid all of, uh, of this this alchemical soup all over all over the place. And you can see that the bubbling of this soup, they're bubbling eyeballs. That instead of bubbling up, it's just an eye that comes up, expands in size, pops, and oh. then pulls back into into the liquid. Noted. That was probably some people in there. Um, yeah, it must have been full of people, and now the people. Oh man, alchemical right. soup is people. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's al al and chemi chem <laughs> chemical. <laughs> I don't know. I just turned to good track. I just turned to Sebastian. So say, probably the only thing though, I won't like eat. you can feel Jack the heat of this this area. You're sweating profusely underneath, but you don't feel sick. Good, good. Uh, yeah, I want to dip the boot. Thought it okay. melted. <laughs> Roll a d6. Oh, yeah. Four. A four. As you go in to dip the boot, you lower the 
boot down and this strange wave sort of forms in the postulating icor below and it kind of rises up from two either sides to almost like a mouth and as you dr- lower the boot down the mouth begins to close and shut around the boot what are you going to do i let go of the boot <laughs> And as you drop the boot, this mouth comes up from the i and just chomps the boot. And as you do, you can hear this, this strange, almost like the bubbling of the liquid. You can almost hear a voice on it that says something that sounds like delicious. Pluto. Uh, based on my research, maybe don't dip your foot into the soup. I'm just taking a guess here. I've written down notes. It doesn't look good. The soup has claimed one boot. Okay. Pluto, do you want to try? <laughs> do I hear them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can hear them. Do you want to try to put, like, a Umberhold claw in there? I think we should stop feeding the soup. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to spend the next know. hour throwing. <laughs> things in the soup just okay no no as Um, you continue to throw things in in the soup (laughs) um this strange another wave begins to rise up out of it and as it rises up this collection of bubbling eyeballs and frothing mouths coalesce before you they have this strange almost they coalesce from the liquid in this purpley red almost like burned and charred flesh rising up out of this alchemical soup. And as it does so, the ground at the edge of the crater begins to almost turn to mud and slick. You guys can roll for initiative. Oh no, (laughs) I shouldn't have fed it. Stop feeding the soup. (laughs) Feed it more. No. Uh Uh-oh. Um, I was going to feed it Eldritch Lilies next. No! <laughs> to see what... No. Oh, God. Where's our... Where's our rope? That's our observation deck. <laughs> You're going to watch me get eaten by soup. We'll, we'll be backing you up from here. Yeah. In Drakenheim, soup eats you. <laughs> it's, I'm so scared. Okay. Throw some uh, croutons in it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the boot. Alrighty. So these strange masses of writhing alchemical soup and flesh with biting maw-like mouths and eyeballs that bubble up, slowly increase in size, some getting as large as a small basketball before exploding in a shower of pus and alchemical icors. What do we got for initiative? Got a nine. A nine? Fourteen. I also have a nine. Who wants to? Children, you. Uh, you can go. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. I'll go before Veo. Soup. I am one with the soup. You will be. I am. <laughs> I have made contact with the soup people. Journal entry. <laughs> Day forty three in Drakenheim. How many days we got? I have. <laughs> I'm trying to think about how long. And I've if been. you haven't figured it out already, these are none other than gibbering mouthers. Yay! <gasps> what are those? <laughs> Piles of mouths and, and they eyes. Beat you on initiative. Oh no! Yay! The rope trick. Okay, <laughs> so the gibbering mouthers coalesce out of the acidic it's pool uh, uh, and. Uh, we can bring up our battle cam there as well. Gibbering. Matters. Yeah. Probably have to adjust the shot just a little bit. Nice. As they coalesce and form, you can hear them speaking and almost screaming with their mouths saying things like, delicious, give more, give more, give more, eat, 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 eat. And... Also, sometimes screaming words of why, no, no more, as these mouths continue to, and most of all, just gibberish. They just continue to say, 
One of the first ones rises up out of the pool of the crater, moves towards you, uh, and it moves very slowly towards you, uh, Paluto. And as it does, it begins, uh, it, it actually fires the spittle that comes out of one of the eyes as it explodes. And I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, ba 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 bam. Is it directed only at me? It is indeed. <gasps> 12? 12. Y- you raise your shield, and the spittle soars. Y- it hits just the top of the spittle, and it goes right past it and directly into your visor and into your eyes. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> you are blinded. Oh. And as the creature comes up, it now Ow. attacks you with advantage, getting a big old 15 to hit. Uh, negatory, Mr. Jibbery Eyes. Alrighty. Nodes. The second one lurches forward. Ah! <laughs> also biting you profusely. Getting a mighty 11 <laughs> on its attack rolls. I'm just flailing around wildly because I have spittle in my eye. Cool. And it, I'm dodging. Uh, <laughs> first up, Sebastian, you're up. Uh, seeing this happening, I pop my... Well, no, I actually, I'm just going to poke my arm out of the portal. Okay. And kind of like look down and be like, Pluto duck. <laughs> and I uh, cast Scorching Ray, and I fire beams of fiery okay. light. As you pop out, you can hear the babbling of these creatures. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. Five. Five? Alrighty. Um, roll a d8. Here we go. Seven. Seven? Okay. Um, as you come out, you hear the, the, the babbling creatures and you scream in terror as it, as it echoes into your mind. Ah. Um, and you (laughs) fling away and you need to make a melee attack against Veo. (laughs) So I pop my head out. They, I hear the sounds that they're making and and I'm, instead of yelling duck, I turn to Veo and slap you. (laughs) You can try. You poke her in the eye. I get a 12. No. It okay, doesn't. Okay, Veo leaps out of the way uh, as you do so. Unfortunately, that's your turn there, Sebastian. I don't want to deal with this right now. And I walk <laughs> off into your portal dimension. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Veo, you're up. Um, all right. I, um, I just want to, like, almost, like, rest my... Uh, edge of my feet on uh, the edge of the portal and kind of like swing down uh, upside down. Okay. Pointing my so uh, cool. longbow at the one that's in front of Pluto. Okay, make an acrobatics check to keep yourself in place. Uh, 26. Okay, so you swing down out of, out, <laughs> out of it. So oh, you're wow. hanging upside down outside yeah. and you hear the gibbering of, ah. of the mouthers. Pretty, pretty make a wisdom saving throw. And no, nobody saw that. Pluto's <laughs> blinded, and I'm... Uh, <laughs> 22. Alrighty, that's a, that's a, that's a crit. crit. Yeah, crit on that. Nice. <laughs> okay, yes. you are good to go. What will it be? Alright, I'm going to um, take th- my three shots using my extra attack and my dread ambusher. Oh, man. And I'm going to shoot at the one in front of Pluto. So first attack. Um, 12? That will actually hit. These, hitting these things like a bro- broadside of a barn door. Bam. Uh, 22 damage. <laughs> okay. <Yep>. Veo. <laughs> My second uh, attack. Same one. 
Um, <laughs> I hit it. 18 yep. plus 5. Uh, and then for 18 damage. And it's bloodied. Woo! And then my last attack, same one. Uh, 19 plus 5. <laughs> wow. That's some sharpshooting right there. Pew, pew, pew. Upside down. Upside down. <laughs> oh, uh, and that's 21 damage. <laughs> And okay. Then I just As you flip back upside down outside of the um, outside of the rope trick, you fire three swift shots into the gibbering mouthers. Your arrows piercing the eyes and mouths with loud pops, a rupturing bits of its of it, whatever the internal kind of anatomy of this thing is sending bits of alchemical fluid spilling all over the floors and into the area it's extraordinarily wounded if it has a concept of being wounded and therefore bloodied but it is still alive oh yeah. my gosh and then i swoop back up into my rope trick <laughs> uh Paluto, i think i skipped you it's your turn you yeah, are we'll, blinded we'll just say vega goes before me yeah um uh i'm gonna being blinded is not my for it wasn't ideal no and um yeah this no? this <laughs> this experiment's going and down. the f- ground beneath you is the alchemical fluid um spills around your feet are sinking into the ground make a strength saving throw Ooh, Uh, 23. Okay, you're fine, but I do need that wisdom saving throw, too. Oh, goodness. These things are just so nasty. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, oh, thank goodness. Uh, 20. Okay, you're good. Though you sink into the ground, you are blinded, and you are hearing these horrible whispering gibbering gib- gibberishes. You keep your resolve, and you keep your strength, but you are blinded. I'm going to disengage. Okay. And I'm going to back up. Alrighty. Move your stuff where you like, where closer you like to, go. to the. Uh, I'm just gonna back up, and after I disengage, I'm kind of like wildly swinging and using my shield. Cause can I actually? Um, would it take an action to start to try to clear my eyes? Uh, the blindness will end at the end of the Mouthers next turn. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So How far gonna... away would you like to move from them? Uh, about. I'm going to try to go my full move until I hit, like, okay. the wall. The ground around the Mouthers is difficult terrain, so it's half speed there, so you'll be able to move about 20 feet away from them. Put me up, like... Yeah, I, right, to the, just keep right to the up. street. Yeah, I'm just going to keep backing up. Cool. But with my body to them. So okay. I'm just kind of like... Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. The Mouthers. For science. The Mouthers lurch forward towards you. They spend both their movement and their actions to get right up to you again. They coming for me. Yep, they are. I sense them. And the blindness is over. Yay! Hi! They lurch forward, leaving Hi, this everyone. trail of ichor and grit behind them. The, f- the ground stained like the passage of acid sweeping across it. Sebastian, you're up. I come back to the uh, hole... And uh, (laughs) look down. I'm like, okay, sorry about that. Um, Got a little freaked out there. These things are weird. Uh, Let's try this again. Um, And I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay. Pop out. Give me that wisdom saving throw, buddy. Gibbering. Twelve. You're good. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I'm gonna cast scorching ray. I'm actually going to quicken it. Okay. Where would you like to direct the first ray? At the injured, bloodied one. Okay, go for it. With all the arrows. Get him! Did it eat the arrows? They ruptured parts of it, and the arrows have since been absorbed by it. Yeah. What you got? Twenty-five. Give me damage. Using some new dice. Yeah. Nine damage. That destroys it. Boom. <laughs> Burned away leaving behind almost like an acid acid washed slick on the city streets. Uh, I'm going to direct the next ray at the other. Okay. That's a crit. Nice. <laughs> Thanks so, for Spellsplitter Dice. 
So I aim right between its eyes. Most wherever the most eyes the are. Concentrated the amount concentrated of amount eyes. of eyes. Cool. I hit it right in the middle of all of them. Nice. I roll. I roll it twice, right? Eighteen damage. It Boom. collides with the eyes, making them all explode in a shower of gore and all fluid that ignites in the air like lighter fluid. I got one more ray, right? Yep. Jeez. Sixteen. That hits. Yeah, right. They're easy to you hit. You good? You good? You good? Eight more damage. It is bloodied. And. I actually can't remember what these guys have, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw out a chill touch on it as well. Okay. Twelve. That hits. Very nice. So finally, after blasting it with these beams of energy, a ghostly hand grabs it by the face. Where is its face? Yeah, I don't know what would count as Once again, face. wherever whatever whatever <laughs> looks the most face like I'm grabbing that and doing four more a necrotic damage to it. Cool. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ten more, sorry. Thank you. Forgot that second die, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rolled an eight. That's not a die to forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. Um with that. Sebastian, the creature relentlessly continues to bear down upon Pluto, but Veo, it is your action. I uh, swing just like, yeah, same way, kind of like swing my body <laughs> down and say, okay, where are we at? <laughs> just kind of taking the scene and I take my two shots using my longbow. Cool. Roll it. Uh, and give me the wisdom saving throw first because yeah. this creature continues to give her words of madness. Ooh, five. That is a failure. I need a, you to roll me a D8, please. Two. All righty. The voices echo inside your mind, and you can feel this buzzing migraine, and you pull yourself back. You cannot do anything this turn. That's okay. <laughs> Ouch. What's wrong, Veo? My head hurts. At least I didn't slap someone. <laughs> la, 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 la. I'm not listening. La, 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 la. Uh, I'm like, you go on without me. <laughs> I've done my part. What you got? Oh, a six. Roll me a D8, sir. Uh, another six. Okay. So he, he, here's actually what we need to find out. So... At the start of your turn, the creature begins to gibber even louder, and Veo holds her head back, and she uh, and she tries to like hold herself in place, and you yourself succumb to the same thing. You roll a six. You, however, are going to be running in a random direction. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> however, I need you to make a strength saving throw first to see if you're stuck in the gibbering mouth or difficult terrain. Please be stuck. Please be stuck. Oh. 11. You are not stuck. No! <laughs> so, roll me a d8. Um, and, uh, actually, sorry, and the d8 will go um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or... Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be the, the different cardinal directions. So just anything but 1. 5. 5? Okay, so you basically run away from the creature, uh, at five o'clock, which is that way, uh, at your full uh, at your full speed, and you provoke an attack of opportunity ah! as you do so, and it gets a twenty to hit. Oh yeah, alrighty, that's the money. Alrighty. Poke jazz, you're getting away. As you run away from it, it lurches out with a uh, a blinding array of bites, biting you in the ankles and and in the back, and you take a total of 17 piercing damage and I need you to make one more strength saving throw of oh. to avoid being knocked prone. Oh, uh, 21. Okay, you don't. You you rush away. Ow. So strong. It bit me. <laughs> it bit me in the ankle. I'm still taking notes. <laughs> hmm. Ankle. And then the mouther later. rushes back towards you and goes to bite you again. Getting a mighty five to hit. 
and that's when I'm going to I'm going to repost. Uh, you actually cannot take reactions because you've been affected by it. Uh, Is it because he's jabbering? Yeah, because of his jibber jabber. Jibber jabbering yeah. jabbering. So we go to the top with Sebastian. Uh, so I'm screaming science. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> screaming. You're holding your head in pain. Pluto's yelling science and screaming and running at a wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Getting, and the creature's just like, pinning you, you run up against the wall and it just like sloshes right up against you like this fleshy wave trying to bite into your armor. It can't find purchase anywhere your armor, but it's, it's almost like engulfing you. Almost like it's a gelatinous cube, but it's not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's giving like veil visions <laughs> of that. And she's just holding her head. Sebastian. I pop out wisdom save. Yep. I make it. Nice. I, I rolled a nineteen. Nice. nice. Um, so I I pop out and I point at the gibbering mouther or gibbering, and I say, "Hey, mouther, eat this!" <laughs> and I fire a firebolt. Okay. It probably wants to. 17. That hits. Ba bam. Seven damage. It definitely ate it. It opens its mouth wide up and, and swallows the, the firebolt as it, as it comes in. And there's like a pop as parts of it fly away. But it's still, there's enough of it together to continue fighting. I pop, I pop back up and I grab you and I'm like, you need to snap out of it because I thought that was going to kill it and I think Pluto needs help. Okay, fail. Science! I'll do my best. Science! And I pop back out. See my wisdom. Nine. That is a failure. Roll me a D8. <laughs> I'm so not wise. Please don't shoot me with an arrow. I said Please snap don't out shoot of it. Six. You run in a random direction. Uh, so roll me a uh, D10. Because on a 9 or a 10, you're going to... Wait, you're still hanging upside down. So roll a d6, and there's a 50-50 shot that you're just going to jump right down. Two. Yeah, you do. Oh. <laughs> so you just uh -oh. let go, and you're going to fall the 20 feet that you guys were up. You take 8 points of damage, you land prone, <laughs> and you're there on the ground. Uh. I said snap out of it, and you instantly just <laughs> fall... You pop your head out and just fall and on your back. And I did back. not land on my feet. You did not. You're just like. <laughs> you were supposed to land on your feet. Have you ever seen like a cat just totally miscalculate a jump? Yes. <laughs> this is just what happened. It's the gibbering. <laughs> yeah. The j j gibbering. Okay, Paluto. Uh, let's get that wind against throw, buddy. The... Uh oh. Oh yeah. Oh. You can do Please it. Please guide this dice. 21. All right, Woo! you're good. I'm going to spin around and just start wildly slashing at this monster. Like cool. Whatever it is. Slash, slash. Just, just feeding it. 14. That's a hit. For 10 damage. And then, and I'm screaming the whole time. <laughs> like just, just yelling. 23 for 13 damage. And you cut it in two large slices that bubble out and spill with this alchemical fluid all over the ground and cease moving. And I keep <laughs> just <laughs> hacking into it. Holding my head cool. and my eyes. Um, Veo and Sebastian, I'm both going to have you make one more constitution saving throw because you've been exposed again because you came outside, of the, uh, came outside of the rope trick. Mm -hmm. Did I? You came out each time you popped it to attack. 21. 27. Okay, you're good. They'll give you one more as you climb back into the rope trick. I'm guessing you're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Crit. You guys are really <laughs> resistant to the... Well, maybe you don't need the, the syringes. What? <laughs> no, no, you don't. Thank you, Skulls. We didn't need any of all this. the crits tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Before we delve into the ruins, I have a few people that I want to shout out, same as always, but... A uh, big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use, such as the Initiative Tracker. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Axe and Shield, you definitely should. He has a lot of really cool stuff. Um, also to Tabletop Audio for the great ambient music you're hearing. And finally, 100 Years Bore for the amazing narration in our introduction video. If you're enjoying the stream and want to support our work, you can check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. 
And uh, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been generally sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. And they sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use at the game tonight. Um, and they come in these awesome tins. These are the this is the Thieves Tool tin, and it has uh, Plan B, which is three daggers on the back. I really like that. <laughs> I, I, I love that. that. Yeah, uh, the dice are really beautiful, and they've been rolling pretty well for me so far tonight. Very I think well we've had a couple me. good crits. Yeah. Um, so to let you all know, uh, Skull Splitter Dice is giving away a free set of their dice to one of our lucky viewers every month. Uh, if you follow us on Twitch or subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, all you have to do is follow the link below to confirm your entry. There's literally nothing else you have to do other than that you're not already doing anyways. But if you do follow us on Twitter as well, we'll give you a plus one bonus. Um, if you want to pick up a set of Skull Splitter Dice now, you don't want to wait to win the contest, you can head over to SkullSplitterDice.com and use the discount code DDUDES and you'll get 15% off your next order of dice. And I hope that they roll really well for you when they show up. Mm. Uh, with that, I think let's uh, delve back in. Nothing to see here. Uh, before the break, uh, Pluto Jackson uh, was a guinea pig and got horribly mauled by a gibbering mouther. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned a lot about science. <laughs> yeah, it was for, for science. Yeah, it was for science. It was for truly the, the noblest cause humankind has ever aspired to, <laughs> and the best reason to adventure. Yeah, and I will not be subject to fifty-one that dies as part of uh, Oscar's journal. I will survive. And I will overcome, survive and thrive. Yeah, yeah. So as you're kind of like washing off, like you're just scraping off the grit of this gibbering mouther, all the these bites, you can kind of see just Veo's tail just disappear into the invisible window of the rope trick. <laughs> We're back to observation. <laughs> yeah. Observation post. Because like you can't like what you're seeing is this rope that's risen into the air, and it just ends suddenly. It's it, Unless the two of you have pulled it up, or you're leaving it down. I think we're leaving it down. Just yeah, in we case. left it down. Just and case. it just ends. And when you when they walk up, they just disappear. So you can't even see them watching you. <laughs> like for all you know, they could be like eating a hamburger. Yeah, they're just not yeah. paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> you're just down there listening to this bubbling pool. I'm, I'm totally like sitting by the the hole, eating a sandwich and watching it. I'm definitely eating snacks. Yeah, we have like snacks. pasta, pasta sandwich. Yeah. You guys aren't eating up there, right? You're watching. No, Obs no. observing <laughs> diligently. Observing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna continue my my own personal journal. <laughs> of of yeah, I'm gonna do like jumping jacks, and I'm gonna practice like cartwheels. Do some burpees. Yeah, burpees. Like a lot of like, yeah, and, and I feel great. And I'm just I'm just hanging out. Sweet. It, do I? I feel great. Uh, you feel pretty good. Um, you've got a little like again. The feeling when this is in your system is not unlike a fever. So you are sweating much more than you would be. You feel a little bit of that heartburn. It's not enough that it's impairing your ability to move or act or even fight. It's uncomfortable to say the bat to say the best of it um but given what has happened before when you've been exposed to the haze like this and like the fact that you're right in front of this pool of irradiated delirium infested alchemical soup and not dying of uh exposure to it in less than a minute probably says a lot about the effectiveness of this concoction I'm going to do some browsing around then in the ruins. Okay. I want to look for some uh, delirium. Yeah. If you spend the next hour kind of searching around, you can see that there's small clusters of delirium that have formed along the edge of the crater. Uh, kind of almost like water lilies or reeds piercing up from the edges or collecting on the banks as they're being washed from this frothy mixture in the middle the the crater is almost like a big cauldron and the delirium bits that are collecting on the edges of it almost like rust i'm gonna snatch it how 
with my other boot. Okay. <laughs> it takes you a few tries to figure out a way to like break the delirium off from the ground that it's connected to. And I can to. use part of my uh, mason's tools. Mm -hmm. Mason tools, and I can collect it in the boot. Uh, yeah. Um, chip, chip, chip. You lose a few pieces into the soup, but you are able to collect one boot full, three oh. pieces of delirium. Okay. Do I? Do I? Can I see him at this point on the edge? Yeah. I'm like, tie the boot to the rope, and I'll pull it up, and I'll put it with our stash. Okay. Try touching it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Good idea. Try touching it. Science. For science, uh, I'm going to take my glove off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up one of the delirium <coughs> pieces underneath the rope. I'm standing underneath the rope, and they're pulling okay. this at me, and I'm going to touch the delirium. Okay. You reach down to touch. And I touch it like a hot element, like, you know, like, yeah. where, where you would, like, you, you kind of tease it, and I get close to it, and then I eventually... It feels almost like a hot element when you touch it. Ooh. It's hot. Spicy. <laughs> it's it's mm -hmm. hot in my fingers. And almost like it's soft to touch it with your with your like you feel it almost give way to your flesh when you handle it. Is delir is delirium soft? I yell it. At we don't know. know. Well, well they I handled are. it. I'm gonna in the past, I'm gonna I'm mm -hmm. gonna has it been kind of mushy? Or has it been no. pretty shard-like? It's been pretty shard-like. It's been pretty I'm gonna solid. talk out. I'm going to kind of talk out my my observation. So it's like, I'm picking up the delirium. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot. Spicy. Hot, spicy. Mm. Um, it yeah. feels soft. soft. Soft to touch. When you touch it, after a few touches, you realize it's not that the delirium is soft when you're touching it. Uh -oh. It's almost like your s flesh sinks into it just a little bit. Or it sinks into your flesh. It's kind of hard to say. I want to... I wanna Stop touching it! <laughs> <laughs> I want to just put a small piece in the middle of my palm. Experiment over. <laughs> okay. You've got one of these shards. So it's... It's not quite a small piece, but if you want to break off a small chunk of one of them to try this with, you can. <laughs> I'm getting... I, I can't see you guys, so I'm just, like, doing this. Okay. I'm looking at Sebastian like, yes, no, We have yeah, enough. No, we have yes. enough research. How far does it... Can I hold on to one end and kind of push it into with my a, hand? With a gloved, gloved yeah, head? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're done Okay, so you do this, oh and as you push it towards your hand, but I can't have you away. ever pushed... A hot knife into butter. Yeah, that. It as you push the delirium towards your flesh, it the tip of it just starts to sink into your flesh almost right away. I pull it out. You pull it out, and the flesh where you place it towards is like melted. So you have now like a little melted spot of flesh. <laughs> and and if you kind of like poke that spot, there's a moment where it's almost like fluid-like and like dough before it settles back into, into flesh and now is like this knobby scar in the middle of your head. Like a five-year-old that just got stuff all <clears throat> over his hand. I just like <laughs> hold up my hand to the... <laughs> it's Thank doing you, Pluto. This. It's doing this. Pluto, did Noted. that hurt? Did it hurt? Yeah, it did. It hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it Ow. again. <laughs> Turns flesh into dough. Send up the uh, delirium. I want to see if it does okay. the same thing with me. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send up the the boot. Yep, das boot. I pull it up, and I take the same piece out that you were using. Um, is it any different in my hands, or does it feel no. the same? No, it feel it feels like a normal piece of delirium to you. Hmm. We're so good at science. Take notes. Can I just say? <laughs> take that note, we're scientist. Like, we're noted. Killing mm -hmm. it. And I put it with the rest. We have a decent amount of delirium right now. That's why we need to go to uh, Amberwood Village with all this information. Do do we? I think we have what we needed. Any other experiments? Do you see anything yeah. else in the rubble? Oh, um. Can you do a front flip? <laughs> I, I, what what else do we need to know? We need to know 
So I can I can touch delirium. I can it survive. It sinks into your hand. Yeah, I wouldn't say you can touch delirium. Wait, is... does it sink into your hand? I don't care to find out. Oh, okay. Um, science, Sebastian, science. I'm doing science. <laughs> Pluto is my guinea pig. I'm I'm quite content with the information we have. We know that the serum works. Um, we know that there's a pool of body parts melting together here. Um, so that's that's fun. We'll I definitely have to form something to try to see if we can get something else out of this uh, pot. We'll have to come back. We have two more vials. We can. I mean, yeah, we can always come back. It's a nice place. We can give River nice one place for a vacation. For ourselves. Yeah. Sweet. All right. You guys want to head to um, back out of the town and yeah, we got we got to run though. Yeah, we'll have to run. Yeah, <gasps> you're pretty good, uh, Pluto. Yeah. You probably don't have to run. Pluto, can you carry me? <laughs> I think you will probably run faster than he can carry you. Yeah, but then I have to breathe a lot. Okay, fine. Can I pull the? hole? <laughs> Can I just grab the rope? <laughs> no. And, like, the rope no. Oh, that, that would, would be, be cool. amazing. <laughs> that would be so cool. Like but a no, balloon? <laughs> no, the spell doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. <laughs> like this invisible hole? That okay. would be a cool variant on a rope trick. Um, it's like a rope so then, stuff. there's got to be something else, though, that uh, what are we... No, we just came here to experiment with your body. I'm just thinking, is there anything else that in the ruins weird. that we could find, since they're all, all the alchemical shops that might have some stuff? Uh, well, then Pluto should go investigate that Well. I eat more sandwiches. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to spend some time going around this area. Sure, you just want to want to search around. How much yeah. time do you want to like? Cause you, how long have we spent so far? Are we? Uh, you you spent about half your time. So if you want to spend the remaining half hour searching around through the the nearby buildings, yeah. Um, you. Yeah, let's uh let's roll one of the, these D100s. <laughs> It's just it's like a ball. Um, okay. It's kind of big. You head into one of the, the shops in this area. Um, the first one that you pass by, it looks like it was filled with a bunch of books and scrolls and stuff like that. It looks like it might, might have been a paper, paper maker shop. You open up another another door, and it it's, smells roughly alchemical, filled with a lot of vials, a few other things. The... The few, but as you come closer to the, the vials, they're filled with ink. Uh, the, the shops in this area all seem to be like supply stores for like the things that wizards would have needed. So book, book making, book binding, ink makers. Uh, there you pass by a cobbler shop and a really ex exquisite haberdashery with l really tall pointed hats. Come mm. here. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Not my style. However, sifting around, um, within many of these places are the, s the shocked and charred bodies of their occupants. Like, many of the buildings here probably have not been explored at all before, um, given their proximity to an impact crater of this magnitude and what, what has happened here. Um... And you are able to uh, you you kind of search search around a few uh, 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 pardon me and searching around through several of the areas you're able to find one of the the stores which seems to have a collection of some potions inside it seems to be a potion maker shop mm. oh I'm reading. And while most of it is alchemical supplies and things, there is a small locked box underneath the desk that you kind of break it open, and inside are six vials. They appear to be potions of greater healing. Ooh, jackpot. Two each. Um, I also want to... So I'm going to grab the box, but then also I want to start to just pull into a bag like the supplies sure so like a bunsen burner <laughs> like different vials and different like those swirly 
twirl like swirly rods. Olympics and oh, they, yeah. that looks yeah. so cool that I've that I most know. many of them break as you throw them into the bag. <laughs> but the the broken glass inside will cushion the others. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're they're glass. <laughs> yes. So you're able to assemble a few of those pieces of equipment like that. Nice. Um, and with that, uh, the rope trick ends, and Woo! Sebastian and Veo <laughs> are deposited outside in front of the uh, the alchemical soup lake crater. Both right. of you can give me constitution saving throws right away. 19. Six. Veo, you gave, gain one level of exhaustion. Run! And, and uh, we, we dash. And Veo, you're also going to take 10 points of radiant damage. Ooh. You guys all start running? Mm -hmm. Cool. As you flee the area of the heavy haze um, as quickly as you possibly can, um, covering your faces, <laughs> running through it, the the effects sink in really, really quickly. Probably, had you stayed in this area, you would have experienced the effects like that every round you were there. So that's just how much of an oh. impact. Yeah, I, I like every round you were outside, you would have would have been taking the the save. Mm. Uh, you're able to run fast. Uh, Veo, you you're able to run how fast in one round? How fast can you if go? If I <clears throat> dash, uh, I can go. I think it's 140 feet. Okay. I'm going to have you give me one more constitution saving throw, and Sebastian, give me two more as you rush out of the area of the deep haze. <laughs> Eight. Eight? Nine. You both gain another level of exhaustion. Ooh. Yeah. I think that one reduces your speed by half there, Vea, does it? Or is that the one that's just disadvantage on attack rolls? And I have to do one more? I think it's yep. disadvantage. Let's see what it is. Eleven? You're good. <laughs> yes. Oh, speed halved and a disadvantage on ability checks. Okay. Yep. Tired cat. <sighs> yep. 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 Even um, even the deep haze affects you, and like you're feeling sick now. Yeah. Yeah. You're Are feeling the the effects of the of the of the delirium sickness pretty acutely. Are we we closest to the tower though, right? Like your tower? Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we are can. pretty close. Do you want to head there and take a rest and then what? head back through Shepherd's Gate and then go down towards Emberwood Village? I think that's going to mm. be the best because I don't you know. You are actually closer to Shepherd's Gate. Oh, okay. Oh. Let's just go to yeah. Shepherd's Gate. But I'm going to need a rest at some point because... I mean, if we're just heading straight to Emberwood Village and we don't stop along the way to do anything. Have you known that to be our luck? I, uh, Dragon him. <laughs> there's going to be a moment when everything comes out of me, and I want to be in a nice place for that. <laughs> All right. I don't want to be yeah. running. How long would it take life. for us to get to Emberwood Village, time wise? Um, With me tired and him. If you go <laughs> through the Take route that you've taken bomb. before, yep. probably about four hours or so. If you and that's going through the city proper. If you take long, if you go outside, the, if you skirt around the city, yeah, it'll take about twice as long. Eight hours. Do you think you can survive that? I, can I hold it in for eight hours? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I have no idea. I think we need to get you to the tower then. <laughs> Do you have? Is there like? Is there a washroom? I'm sure we can figure it out. There's buckets. <laughs> There's buckets. <laughs> There's a sewer system, so there are. Washrooms and Dragon Hood. Uh, Normally, you would take a bucket. It's not that kind of sewage sy no, system. Damn. Toss it out into the street. I'll yes. Oh God. Yeah. I'll go in the street. I guess. Oh, no, Pluto. Like for the early parts of human history, the sewers were there to drain what was in the streets. Yeah. Not necessarily what was in people's homes. Although there would be parts of the underground system that would also deliver water. Um, those would be distinct. So you'd have to have a really, really nice home and a really, really nice setup to have working plumbing that would go in. Like people in the in the old town might have have plumbing proper in their homes, but most houses would not. They just throw stuff on. So they, what you're saying is there's a good chance that Pluto's just gonna have to destroy a street corner. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna have a special delivery for the fish people. <laughs> That's what's gonna special happen. Special delivery for the fish people. Oh, wow. They'll enjoy it. <laughs> okay. So your destination then is your tower. Yeah. 
Okay. We need to get there because Pluto is going to not have a good time. <gasps> and- <laughs> cool. You can all roll me a d6 on your way back. As I close my... Three. Four. Three. Three. Okay. Oh, it takes much longer with Veo vale exhausted and suffering the effects of, of delirium sickness and an <laughs> acute effect on Sebastian. You take a very cautious route through through the city, um, proceeding about twice as long... About, it takes you twice as long as it would normally take you as a result of this, but you are able to make it back to the tower safely. Um, it takes you roughly three hours just to cross through the city at, at, in the state that you're in. <laughs> and as you get back to the, 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 the tower, Pluto, it's, it's happening, man. I'm how, sorry. how does it, how, uh, <laughs> what, what do I feel first? <laughs> it's like, um, it's, it's, it's coming out the back of you, man. I'm, I'm real sorry. I just, uh, I just start making a high pitched. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and I just run ahead of you guys and into like a corner of the tower. Does he get the armor off in time? Ooh. <laughs> Make a dexterity check with disadvantage I, as you try to pull your armor off. I demand that they help me. Are you guys going to help him? No. Help me. No. I'm not going near <laughs> him right now. He ran away going whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm, like, okay. I'm just enjoying watching him run around. What do you got? A check? Dexterity check, yeah. Five. So, you get about halfway through the process of getting your armor off. I started at the top. When it starts. And, and it, it, yeah, it, it like... It's echo in his armor. <laughs> my, we can hear it, it from, from over here. It's... It, it's <laughs> yeah. Um, That's... Yeah. I, uh, I... And the smell is just... I I, I, I asked for imagine. a bucket. <laughs> it it smells like death. It, it it like putrescence. And then it starts coming out your mouth as well. And it's it's, like, it's just liquid. Ugh. Ugh. Yep. And your dad's not gonna like what I did to his armor. <laughs> we might need to like soak the armor for a, a day or so. Um, yeah. So I'm just auto- quietly. No, probably yeah. not quietly. I'm loud. No, it's very loud. It's very painful. And I'm in the. I'm gonna be on the bottom layer of the yeah. tower, while you guys are upstairs. Don't do it in the tower. I'm yelling it's, down. It's, it's too late, man. He <laughs> ran in the tower. He ran to a corner, and it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Pluto, I need you to clean that corner. We have to live here. Nope. I'll send on some no, like harpy the... feathers to like absorb it. <laughs> we lay down some newspaper. Yeah, like when you when you see throw up at like the amusement park, <laughs> like we just put use a bunch of harpy feathers to try to soak it up. <laughs> It's painful and it burns. How long does it last? <laughs> There's so many maths going on. How long? <laughs> How long am I like this? Uh, let's see. <laughs> About four hours. Oh. <laughs> ah. Of, of varying intermittent periods <laughs> of... Uh, Guys, I think I'm over. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, I feel really good. Nope. <laughs> or you know what I mean? It is a, you know when you have ep- Epicac, whatever it's called, the syrup, and then you just like everywhere. Yeah, and and it kind of alternates between, uh, and the Both then sides. the vomiting starts too. Oh. Yeah. And how does my overall body feel? Am I feel burnt? Am I still feeling the fever? Am I still? Am no, I- you gain four levels of exhaustion. Four levels. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm it, just laying in a heap of my own. Um, yeah, by by the end of it, it is, and, and like, it's not, it's not fecal matter. It's bile. Yeah. Right, like like it almost delirium. What comes out of him has the same consistency as what those alchemical creatures were made of. Uh, so I have um, uh, hit point maximum halved, disadvantage on all things, speed halved. I'm pretty useless. Well, I'm a heap. I'm a heap of a of a guinea pig. 
I imagine that like by the time like it's four hours of him on the bottom floor and I imagine that we go upstairs and yeah. like hang out. But then when we come back down, <laughs> he's like scrawny and like pale and withered. Mm-hmm. We, I think it's out of me. And <laughs> sitting in a pile of his own filth. And then can we get you up, put, you know, tie the rope around you so we can pull you up and then we'll have a rest. We painstakingly try to carry Pluto up to the bed. Are you going to help him clean himself up? No. Oh, I. He doesn't oh. need to be on my bed. <laughs> He's like broken and just, it's, you're not even going to help him walk off. I well do. We, okay, wait. Is there a source of water nearby? Actually, the the closest would be the wells in the city. And do you nope. want? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sorry, man. No. Have Can to you wait till. Give me a dry wipe, like <laughs> some. We'll find you a sheet or something. I like there. I like pick up one of the dirty cloths that like one of the harpies was using, and I hand it to you. <laughs> there you go, man. Clean yourself up. You stay in that corner. Oh, you guys really looking out for me. I really appreciate. Yeah, it. You smell terrible. We have to get you to Amberwood where we can we give you a proper bath. Feel terrible bath. too. This is ah. this is. It's wrong. Is there like a bathhouse in Emberwood Village or something like that? The river. We'll, we'll take him to the river one. Well, the river's poisonous. Wait, what? No. The oh, by Emberwood yeah. Village, yeah. not the one yeah. in town or yeah. in the city. Like then everyone would be dying. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, have a nap. <laughs> yeah, can we take a rest? But yeah. he gets no benefits, does he? Yeah, he he doesn't. You yeah. don't gain back any exhaustion. Or you just we do. Stay exhausted? Okay. Are we taking a long rest? I, well, I mean, for the four hours he was doing his thing, I think that we took a long rest. I would. You can make a Constitution saving throw for each of the exhaustion levels, little Pluto, and see if you power through it. Can I power through it? <gasps> well, the first one was a. Uh, a seven. Okay, so no. <laughs> so I roll with disadvantage. Uh, a 19. Okay. I'm killing it. Eight. <laughs> and eight. Okay. So through the sleep, you do lose two levels of exhaustion in, over the evening, but the other two still remain. It hurt. Yeah, it did. But, I'm but you're not a little, dead. I'm, I'm feeling a little more spry. You felt pretty good before, but that's the key, is that you know, well, you're, not, you're not dead. Because like, w- what you were exposed to, like Sebastian, as you go over your notes, the fact that he was able to be there for an hour, he would have been dead otherwise. And I got some potions out of it. Dead in how long? Pardon? How long would he have been dead? You said a minute? At best. Oh. Perhaps. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. These potions yeah. really work. Because like, like had, had the two of you not been in the rope trick, you would have been dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I feel much lighter. Much more spry. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> but that's a pretty... I gotta, I gotta admit, I did not imagine using rope trick to avoid the haze. That's a really smart idea. But that... But yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Oh, we were. <coughs> yeah. Uh, we heading to Emberwood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that we're all rested up and everybody's in tip-top shape. Do I still smell? Yeah. Y- yes. I mean, yeah. is it on par with? I, I again, it's it, again. You don't smell like poo. Yeah. Like it. It smells like rotting flesh. Yeah. You know, like those stink beetles. Yeah. <laughs> Pluto, you're going to have to walk 10 feet behind us. No, nope. yeah. no, nope, we're a team. <laughs> I guess, okay, I guess the best way to describe it is, and may- maybe you've never like, thought of this smell before, but like, I've heard doctors exclaim that like the smell of a cancer, uh, of, of a pair of lungs that have had like lung cancer from a smoker, hmm. that, they, that there's like a really bad smell to them. And that's what they smell like. That's what this smells like. Intense. It's it's really intense. And what and again, what came out of you was more like 
liquid and bile than like it wasn't it yeah it wasn't anything that would have naturally come out of you yeah maybe then maybe it is good to do these once in a while you know just to kind of help out with the old system (laughs) how about this i won't necessarily walk by you but i figure out which way the wind is going and i walk (laughs) not in the way that it's blowing towards me that's fair yeah the next day do do you set out the next day yeah okay so the time passes and you set out the next day again slowly with Paluto and Toe. I'm slow too. I'm half um, speed. And in this case, the, the care that you have to take to account for the for Pluto's weakened state, along with the routes that you've now taken several times, I mean, you've got a pretty good system going. Like at, at this stage, you guys have traveled from Shepherd's Gate to the tower and back again, like probably over a dozen times, I think. And so, Veo, you've basically managed to set up, like with your knowledge of the city, you've managed to set up a series of routes that you're very, very adept at leading the group through this city. So I'm not going to check for random encounters as long as you're going directly from the clock tower to Shepherd's Gate with no intervening stopovers. Mm -hmm. We won't check for random encounters anymore. Okay. I think we want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so, once again, um, you pass through Shepherd's Gate, and the the Hooded Lanterns ask, what did you haul this time? You have anything that you found? Potions, gold, treasure? I hand them one piece of delirium that we found. It was a pretty rough adventure this time, and uh, as you can tell, Pluto got a little sick from the the haze. All right, we got right in there. They take the shard, they nod, and allow you passage. You make your way back out across the outskirts of the city, tracing down through the sprawl and crossing the river uh, with Styx's ferry. Yes, yeah, Styx. And following the Dran River down to Emberwood Village. The journey, uh, as I said, it's only about five miles out from the city, so it takes you the, the better part of the morning before you arrive once again lazily in Emberwood Village home it's a, it's been a little while since you've been back here i think you've been almost in this city for now it feels like probably close to two weeks uh since the last time you were here in emberwood village um and as you come into emberwood village in the the middle of the afternoon there's a, a bit of activity or around people moving about uh their typical business of the day the taverns haven't really opened up and you can hear as you come into the village square the pounding of metal and the this plumes of smoke that are coming up from uh crow and sons uh smithy um there's a few wagons that are that are moving about but it, everything seems pretty sleepy in 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 this town um what will you do where will, will you go first oh boy i think we um, should go to your dad's house should we go to the uh, Crow and Sons to see if he's breakfast. there? Oh, you want breakfast? Breakfast. We and also, bacon. River was supposed to deliver the iron to my father as well. Do you think he'd make his breakfast? <laughs> we can head Did to you my, want breakfast? We can head to my house and see if they'll make Only us breakfast. Only if you insist, Pluto. <laughs> yeah. okay. I think you need it yeah, more I keep than bringing me. It up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll head, we'll head to my, well, not my house. My dad's. Okay. My dad's place. Let's see your brothers and sisters. Yeah, I have gifts for my, my brother and sisters. Wait, what did you get them? Uh, harpy oh, the, feathers. The masks? The harpy feathers. Oh, one yeah. of them gets this devil mask, and one of them gets this harpy egg that is somehow still intact in my bag. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I kept it. <laughs> Wait. How long is the, like... Oh. Have you been keeping it warm? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't give that to them. <laughs> As you head to where the crow house is, the what was once a low thatched home that has been built out a little bit more around its own little farmstead and its own little plot of land with a shed out the back, you can see that parked in front of the house is a very large carriage. It is a covered wagon. Uh, that has been 
painted purple and brown and gold. And it has very thick glass windows covering up the inside of it and a pair of lanterns hanging on either end. And there has been a horse hitched to it. There's a pair of white horses that have been hitched to it um, outside the front of that, the house. There's a door leading to it. It's a large enough covered wagon that someone could probably sleep inside of it. It's like a workshop style wagon. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of activity around around the house. You can hear some voices within as you approach. I um, I look through the windows in the carriage. Is there anybody inside? You look through the windows, and all you see is a hazy blackness. Are there any logos on the carriage? Anything that I might recognize? No, but the colors are oddly familiar. Amethyst? Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe it's the ore. They said they deliver it. Yeah. Maybe it's my mentor. Huh. Should we go inside? We home. And get some eggs? Bacon? Sausage? Honey. We home. Elric, right? Elric? Eldric. Eldric. I have a hard time with that one. <laughs> Knew him for years. Can't remember his name. <laughs> Written here. <laughs> I wrote his name down wrong. Okay. Um, Let's go bang on the door. Yeah, I mean, I I live here too, so whatever. Um, yeah, I go in the front door. Um, and you can hear that there's a bit of laughter within. It sounds like the laughter of a few adults. And you hear Moira's voice say, "Oh, just a, just a moment, I'll get that." And she opens the door. She sees the three of you and says, "Sebastian." Veo and Pluto, you're back. Well, welcome. Oh, and she sees Pluto. And she's like, "Oh my God, Pluto! <laughs> Gods, come in, come in. By by the flame, by the flame. Come in, 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 in." And she hurries you into the house. And the children rise up and they scream. And and uh, at seeing you, uh, Emma and Sybil are both here. And they they squeal with delight and run up to uh, hug both Veo and Sebastian. Um, and as they go to say hello to Paluto, they're like, "Ew, <laughs> you smell really bad." Normally, they oh. say that about me. <laughs> oh, I'm a little self conscious about it. And but you I come to play it into the home, the main room of the home, which is both the kitchen, the living room, and everything, because the two bedrooms are just built off to the side. It, there's a large central table in front in front of the hearth, and seated there. Uh, drinking what must probably be tea, it smells like, are two familiar faces to you, Sebastian, and one familiar face and one very unfamiliar face for the other two of you. The first is River. She's sitting there uh, setting down her, her cup of tea, uh, wearing her typical regalia of the Amethyst Academy, the light riding outfit with the, the her hood has been slung back over her chair, and she's uh, she's got a stack of books in front of her and her uh, her mug of tea that she's just finishing sipping. And she's, she smiles warmly as you come in. You can see her toothy grin with her teeth that are just like, just that little bit too sharp to, to them. And her, her stare that just is just so impeccably weird, that whole appearance of tea, it, River as a tiefling. Beside her is a very large elderly black man. He is. He has a skull cap that he, that he's wearing, um, and Sebastian, you've never been able to figure out if he's bald underneath that or if he just has hair. But he has a gray white beard that has been shaved in the shape of a square, so the bottom is a straight line. Oh, that's so cool! Um, and he has these big bushy eyebrows uh, that are uh, white and gray over over his face, and this just completely pockmarked skin. And he wears a pair of uh, circular purple tinted reading glasses. Uh, and he, as he, he stands up as, as you enter setting down his tea, he's about uh, six foot four. So he's a huge man for a mage. Um, and as he, he stands up and river stands up and he says, Welcome. Good to see you again, Sebastian. Excellent to see you too. And Moira says, 
I, I assume you all know each other. And she, she says, Pluto, I'm going to be back. I'm going to, I'm going to run some water for you. We're going to get you cleaned up. Oh. God, you didn't do anything to hell. Why does he smell so, as she runs, as Moira walks off saying, why does he smell so bad? Listen, I'm not his maid. He can take care of himself. My maid died. Strong. Uh, and as she, she runs off, um, uh, Moira turns to Emma and says, Emma, go fetch your father and Peter. Tell them that Sebastian's back and we're going to have dinner early tonight. Um, and she, Moira goes off to, to fix everything up for, for you as, and as um, Eldrick and River say, come sit down. But Pluto, you can, you can stand. Are you going to be okay? All these wizards and not one of them can make me smell fun <laughs> anymore. <laughs> You guys, you, you know, can you just give me like a magic perfume? Like, I don't like they, it either. They pause for a moment and River says, River turns to Moira and says, Moira, don't worry about it. And she comes up to you and casts prestidigitation <laughs> uh, across you. Thank you. Um, and Moira kind of just looks, looks up back at River and looks back at the situation and says, River, you've been here for five days. <laughs> And haven't helped me once with the cleaning and have been having all my cooking and you could do all the cleaning with a wave of your hand. And River just kind of shrugs and says, well, you just look so happy in your domesticity. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, River. Thank you for that. Like, yes. Thank you for. I never learned that one. Yeah. I like try to wave I my know. hand. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get that I one. No, I smell awful. But thank so, you, River. My dad's out right now. Uh, Moira says, "Yes, he's at the shop. He's been he's been working. He's been very worried. You've been gone for a, over a week. There's been a lot of work to do. Um, I need to have some words alone with these two and my father when he gets back here." M- Moira says, sir, "Sir, sure, that's fine." That's fine. Can I get you anything in the meantime? River kind of... I had a whole plan in mind for what I was going to do, and River kind of short-circuited that on me. Eggs, bacon, sausage? Of course, River. Of course. Yes. Uh, so Moira, Moira heads off uh, and begins uh, cooking as you uh, confer with uh, Eldrick and River. Before the kids run off, though, I present them with gifts from our travels. Not the harpy egg. The harpy <laughs> egg for... Um, um, Sybil, Sybil takes the, the egg and she says, is this for breakfast? No, that's for you to take care of and not hatch. It's a harpy egg. <sighs> and for the youngest one, I give a necklace of harpy feathers. And they're like, this is so cool. Uh, and, um, the, the two of them rush off to the corner already spouting off and trying to decide what they're going to name their pet harpy. <laughs> This can only go well. <laughs> Such a good brother. Yeah, you're you're a great um, stepbrother. Yeah, step-brother. Yeah. Moira kind of sighs. And she's just, that isn't going to hatch into a monster, is it? We hope not. No, it will if it does. <laughs> we know I mean, what they are. We know it, what we took it. It from. hasn't been taken care of properly. It's been a week of it sitting in my bag. I I don't. I, don't I think know. it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be fine. If it does hatch, just have that as their first bout of, you know. Intro to warriorism. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they can kill a baby harpy. It's fine. Okay. Um, Eldrick pours some more tea for all of you, and he says, "It's good to see you, Sebastian." It's been a while. And River introduces Veo and Paludo. She says, "Eldrick, this is Veo Senya, and Paludo Jackson. These are the three that I have been." doing well but they've had a few slip ups along the way what would you expect from me <laughs> but we did real good this time promises listen I did my job I showed them around and actually it's good. at this moment I put the notepad or like all re- or not all, um, Oscar's notes on the table as well as can I see the Aldrich Lilies put those on the table and the two remaining potions and I put my hand on top of them. Giving them both? 
one of the potions. Well, they're they're in a, a satchel. Okay. Together. So are you gonna give them show them both or not? I'll show them both. Can you just give them one? They're gonna want both. We need one. We're going. Okay. Into the I know, so both are one. both are out. Yeah. We need one. River smiles, kind of a wicked fiendish grin, and she says, "Good job. I knew I could count on you guys." Thank you. Does it work? We have <laughs> tested it. Why do you think he smells so much? <laughs> it makes you smell like that? I mean, that You have to tell us how does it one of the things that You have to does. inject it straight into the heart. It's pretty intense. Um but then you're immune to the haze. However, after the effects wear off, your body needs to get rid of all the toxins built up inside of you, and it's not pretty. It's as you Marty explain, well. kind of the as you begin to give your report and summarize the events of the past 24, 48 hours, Eldrick just sits back. He crosses his arms, he lights his pipe, and he listens very intently. River is the one that asks all the questions as you recant how. The, the how it works and what it does. What do you tell how much do you tell them? I don't tell them everything. Okay. Well what are you what are the three of you gonna t- say? Um I give them the the facts like about what about what it does. Mm-hmm. We don't have to tell them where we went, what we saw, or any of that. They do ask, where did you test it? Uh, just outside of Queen's Park. I'm Garden. not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thick haze yep. around the mage t- around the mage tower. We didn't get close side. enough to the mage tower, but we were in that vicinity. But you were in the haze around the old tower. Yeah. This is fantastic. It made my hand bubble. It made your hand bubble. Yeah, when I touched delirium to it. So it doesn't give any resistance to handling the delirium. Fascinating. That's, that's, we've tested this before. When humans handle delirium directly, it seems to melt into the flesh. That happened It was doing that. How long until my dad arrives here? Um, you're, you're talking for a little while and they're, they're starting to get the story out of you. I want to know what, what you're going to start to tell them before. Yeah. Seems like he, it might be a little while before he comes back, at the very least. Um, what else do we know? Um, these are the notes from Oscar. And but we need them back. We do I'm need to. Them over yet. Yeah, we need to give them back. We also intend to keep one of these potions. So Oscar Yoren is still alive. Yes, That's and he's uh, he's working for us just like. And he uses want. the Eldritch Lilies to make. Yes, this which concoction. is why we've gotten you Eldritch Lilies, a sample of the potion, and his notes. Fantastic. I'm not going to hand them over right away. The notes? There's something that I want to ask you two about. Mainly Eldritch. Or Eldric. Okay, we can discuss this, but we need those notes. I'll give you the notes if you tell me about my mother. And as you say that, your father comes in. Because I also have this, and I hold up her journal. And I need to know some things. Because it seems that secrets were kept from me. Secrets. I add. Eldrick uh, looks up at Tobias as he comes into the room. He opens the door. Uh, Tobias kind of barges in just as you say, I want to know about my mother. And he hears you say that. And Tobias, kind of, as you turn around to him, you can see that with his big red beard and, and hair and his goggles, he almost turns red himself at the mention of this. And you say, I want to know about my mother. And he says, Sebastian, what are you, what is the, this all about what's going on I've recently discovered notes from my mother in the old clock tower regarding the mages guild the amethyst academy 
and uh, the ongoing workings in the clock tower, uh, alluding to the idea that my mother was in fact part of the Amethyst Academy, which is something that was I was never informed of. I always thought my powers were an accident, a mistake, that I was a blight on this community, that there was something wrong with me. And yet here I am holding a journal that's proof that I'm more like my mother than I thought. And I want to know. I want to know why I am the way that I am. Your father looks at you and says, Sebastian, I didn't know this. You have to believe me, I, I didn't know. And he looks at Eldrick and he's like, he says, Eldrick, did you know? And Eldrick uncrosses his arms. And he says, Leneth Eventide was one of the greatest archmages of the past 100 years. Is that your mom? What's his ah. mom? What does that make me? To be honest, Sebastian, it makes you exactly what you are. A sorcerer with wild and random powers. That's the nature of the beast. Your mother was a good friend of mine, but she was already older than me by the time I joined the guild. I think your mother would have been probably about three, maybe four hundred years old. And this, Tobias, she wanted out. She was done. And she retired to a simple life. That was, it shocked everybody. She hung up her books, everything, left it all, and she wanted privacy. That's all I know. When I took you in, after everything that had happened, and I came to visit Tobias and found out that Tobias didn't know, the best thing that I could figure out was that your mother had reasons for not wanting to tell you. And I figured the best thing that I could do to honor her memory was to not tell you. Whatever her reasons were for keeping that from you, for keeping that from your father, they were her own. She wanted to, li to walk away from this life. And she died when you were born, so we'll never know why. She died when I was born, and I've spent my entire life trying to figure out what happened to me and what happened to this city. And, and that night that I was born, people talk about it like it... They talk about me like... I, I could have had these answers a lot sooner, and there's still more answers I need, and I think the secrets to my powers and what has happened to me and what happened on that night I was born, I, I need to know everything. <sighs> Leneth was quiet, she was humble, she was intense, and she was powerful. And to be perfectly honest, I have no idea why she gave everything up to come to this small town and start a family with a simple man. No offense to you, Tobias, he, Eldrick turns to say. You're a good man, but it's a little shocking that a woman like Lanneth ended up in a place like this. And Tobias shrugs and says... Sebastian, I don't know if you're going to find any answers. I'm sorry, my boy. I really don't. 
But there's only one place that I know of where you could find them. Where's that? Your mother built that house. And everything she left is she had is it's all still there. I haven't I haven't set foot in that house since the day I was born. And you probably didn't step in it because babies don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's even more mind-blowing. <laughs> like, unless you're one of those babies that walks around once you're born. Like, if that's the case, then cool, cool. But I, I, I've no comment for that. <laughs> and so. And that's where we'll end for the night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Unless you're like a baby deer and you just come out and you just start running around. Pluto and in and the baby background. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, good. Uh, yay. <laughs> did I take away from your moment? No, I think I think you made the moment. Perfect. Yeah. That's 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 good comedy. Uh, that that uh, that's where we'll wrap it up for the, this evening. It's so good to be back. Uh, Happy New Year as well, every everybody, uh, and a big thank you to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, and to our production team, Kyle and Clayton, uh, for working hard behind the scene, scenes uh, to keep us all running. Um, as a, as a note, so tonight we were on a Monday, and next week uh, we will be back on a Monday as well. Monday. Yep. Yeah, Monday. 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 Um, after that, so after the 21st of January, when our next episode is, we will be returning to our regular Tuesday nights. Uh, again, this is just to get around my crazy schedule this time of year. Work, work, work. Uh, but we got to keep playing D and D for first D and D. I haven't played D and D all year. This is the first time I got to play D and D all year. Good joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> Uh, if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, uh, mm. check out our Patreon if you haven't already. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Do it. Do it. And it, as well, our uh, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim was sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, we had some really fantastic premium metal dice to use this evening. Um, and we are giving away a free set of Skull Splitter dice every month now uh, to one of our lucky viewers. So any of you that are following us on Twitch or if you subscribe to us on YouTube, just follow the links below uh, to uh, confirm your entry in the contest. Uh, and you can also nab a plus one bonus if you follow us on Twitter too. You can also pick up a set of the Skull Splitter dice at SkullSplitterDice.com and use the discount code DDUS. D dudes at checkout to save 15% off your order. Um, and uh, of course, don't forget in the process of all this to check us out on YouTube. Kelly and I post new videos every week. Uh, what are we posting this week, Kelly? I believe we're posting a video on session zero. Are we doing session zero this week? I think so. Oh, yeah. new year, new campaign. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a cool guide uh, for all you new DMs out there on how to run a super successful session zero. We had a few people asking us about how to do this. So that's dropping uh, this Thursday. You can also find all the prior episodes of the campaign right up there on YouTube too. And uh, classic tabletop audio uh, was the background noise for this uh, session. Check it out. We, You guys keep changing the playlist up, right? Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. some new stuff. That's great. Yeah. Nice. It's all free. And the narration was uh, performed in our intro by 100 Years Boar. Thank you so much. Yes. And once again, we have a bunch of cool gaming accessories generously provided by Axe and Shield. If you guys have not checked out Axe and Shield, he makes really amazing stuff. Not just the initiative tracker, but also flight stands and a whole bunch of other really cool gear to enhance your D&D &D games. And speaking of enhancing your D&D &D games, uh, those of you who are, who are wondering where we get all of our cool scenery, terrain, and miniatures from, uh, this is all cool stuff from Dwarven Forge. Uh, we've been collecting it for a very long time now, and we also got custom miniatures from Hero Forge. So check those out if you're wondering where we got our cool bling. Yeah. As always, thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year, and we will see you next week in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. <laughs>